Hello and welcome to the Praise the Pickle podcast where we're going to talk about some games and some news about some games and yeah, fun for all. And I have with me Daniel Watts. Hello. And Kevin Hart. Hello. Okay, I can say exactly the same thing. <laughs> um, right, Unique. cool. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, so every week we're going to go through sort of um, your standard news and what we've been playing and format, but we've also with a few different things every week. So, this week we're going to start with our top five games of all time, just so you can get mm. to know us a bit and what our... What our um, tasting games is like yeah, i guess i'm excited to know what this is about yeah yeah I, we have no idea what is on each other's list so this will be a surprise for all of us mm. yeah yeah so yeah because yeah but basically we're not telling each other any of these answers to these top fives or things like that before the show so yeah so dan start with your first oh. one Ooh, okay nice um <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my top five of all time. Should I just give you the one? Y- yours aren't in order. Sorry. No, I, I haven't rated them one to five. Um, okay. Did, did, give us this one's, I, I this one's kind of obvious. It. I think this is probably going to be on a lot of people's list, but The Last of Us. All right. Yeah. yeah. Which is just yeah. a wonderful game yeah. with amazing writing and some moments that stick in your memory forever. I think. Um, my my, yeah, my, my, I mean, my one memory from that game is just remembering the giraffe. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's game, such an amazing scene. At one point, so. <laughs> such you, an amazing you scene. It, I, know, I watched you play it for a little bit, and I just remembered the little giraffe bit at the end. The giraffe bit. <laughs> the giraffe that's, bit. Uh, that is a good scene, to be fair. Can't, but it is, and it play. happens directly after one of the most intense and heart-wrenching scenes as well, where Ellie's, I think, having a fight with a guy called David. And, yeah, like... It, it gets really, really dark, and you just have this moment of of peace, of tranquility in the middle, and it really hits home. It's really beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the difference between the scene before and after, and that scene is just because I think the scene before is like the most like brutal. Yeah, I game. would say so. It's, it's it's when they're having like the proper brawl, isn't it? Yeah. When, um, it, it, you know, you're in that like that sort of parlor. I'm going to say parliamentary building. <laughs> I've got the, it looks, kind of looks like a library, and like the guy, there's like a guy trying to drown you or something. I think yeah, like I don't it. remember right. exactly what happens. I just remember yeah. the the shift between that moment and seeing that nature. Uh, I yeah, it was amazing. It's mad. Yeah, yeah, such a good game. And the music as well, man. Oh, the music is so good. It's one of the that the... guy with his banjo, man. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of the one of the only games I think that rivals sort of some of the best of blockbuster cinema. And as somebody that's not, if somebody was not into games and they came and said, you know, what what's this all about? Why is this medium so special? How can it tell such an amazing story? I think The Last of Us is the game that I would yeah. probably recommend, to be honest. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's one. It's like when they announced that they were going to make a film out of it. I think they did they? That. Did yeah, they? I'm sure they did at one point. I don't think it, it's going to happen now, but at one point there there was discussion about a film being made about it, and I was like, why? Yeah. Why? why, why do you, like, you might as well if if you, you don't like games, just watch a let's play of it. It's yeah. Just, like, it's, it's so yeah. good in itself. You don't need to recreate it in a film. Yeah, agreed. Like, yeah. Right, right. Next one. Kev. No, it's yours oh. now. We're gonna we're gonna oh, go, we're gonna go that, round. Oh, yeah. Oh, blimey. Okay. So, <laughs> I I I have like kind of got a. I would say like two lists because unfortunately I'm not really like I have a list of games that like I'd say are games that I like really love but I have other games that I've played more if that makes sense. Right, so so we gave you one instruction of your top five. Yeah, games I know, time. but my, my problem is though. So, <laughs> no, 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 like, <laughs> so, like they they do they do overlap some of them. So like, right, like, for, okay. like for example. You know what, yeah, I'll I'll say, like, the games that I say I've played loads, but I wouldn't call them in, in my top games. So no, example, no, no, just do, do your top five ones. Right, right, I'll do my and, top five. Okay, yeah. uh, so i put my number one being Borderlands. Good choice. I love that game. Yeah, I've, I've, I mean, played all of them. I am excited to play the next one, which I'll I'm probably be getting it very, very soon. Is it out yet? I, uh, it is out, yeah, yeah, it's out. We need awesome. to... Uh, pick that up but yeah that's my uh i'd say yeah it's probably the game i've played 
like multiple times in terms of campaigns. I mean, I, I completed the second one about three times. So yeah, yeah, that's me my too. Lord. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite of the series? Um. Pre sequel. Pre sequel. So I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't want to be really like like a lot of people probably say, "Are oh, we obviously the first one?" Because nothing compared to the always like you know the first ones of everything is always the best. But the, the thing that sticks in my mind mostly is for the fact that the very first like the song that opens all of Borderlands and yeah, everything. Yeah, the intro sequences is, are always top yeah, quality, and I like with Cage Elephant opening up that. Yeah. Oh, just, was that in the oh, game yeah. as well? I never it was. Yeah, that was the opening, and, and that, it's just honestly it's stuck in my mind. Just, yeah. I remember oh. it from the, the trailer. I don't remember. Yeah, because I never played the. I didn't realize it was in the game as well. So good. It's pretty yeah. mad. Awesome mm. games, awesome comedy, right. f- and yeah, timeless. Mm. Yeah. Right. So, to me, I have actually put mine in order because you know I actually listened to you know the the, the, the instructions, instructions yeah. you said that I top gave. five, not top five in order. Yeah, yeah that's true. of course I meant in order. Come on. <laughs> I don't, um, it doesn't matter anyway. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Uh, right. So my number five, I guess is Monster Hunter Freedom Unite 2. On the DS, was it? Or PSP? P- PSP. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I think it, it's, it was hard. Number five was by far the hardest on this list. There were so many things I could have put on there. But like... Oh, so originally, I had Celeste on there because that is an amazing game. And that is... The reason it was really hard to take Celeste out is because I enjoyed Celeste even though it drove me completely insane from start to finish and monster hunter is, is a lot of grinding in it but i think the moments that you have in monster hunter completely trump pretty much anything else <laughs> i can't i can't describe the the enjoyment that you can get out of killing a monster for the first time and the fact that you just do that that is the core principle of the game is you grind gear kill the next monster grind gear kill the next monster yeah and the fact that so that you get that experience over and over again and it is just as satisfying every single time you do it and there's yeah. just a few particular quests on that game that were just so freaking good man <laughs> like um the gold gold and silver rathlos and raffian mm-hmm beating them for the first time in that I can't remember what it was, I think it might have been called Tower of Heaven or something or other it was like a, a map just for that quest where you went to the top of this massive tower and it was just like this arena brawl with like the two strongest monsters in the game my god finishing that was just the most satisfying thing ever you know those moments where you just like proper fist pump the air like <laughs> yeah. jump out of your seat when you do something like like like, like us with cuphead dan like that <laughs> <laughs> so, so like it's just like that over and over again and it was also the social aspect of it that i think it, without the social aspect i wouldn't have put it on the list simply because you know 80 percent of the game is grinding so yeah but, but it was just remembering back to like the first all-nighter I ever had was when my friend Kane came over and we just, we literally laid there all night. I remember the exact quest we were doing. It was the first time we tried to kill the Kirin, which is like a lightning unicorn. And and beating it for the first time at like 4am and giving this little like whimpered scream of like, you know, <laughs> joy. <laughs> joy because we couldn't be very loud. So we were just sort of like, yes! <laughs> it was so good. Yeah. yeah, I think a lot of it's like down to the preparation that you have to put into each fight as well. Mm, yeah, definitely. and the creatures that you fight genuinely felt alive, like you were fighting a living, breathing thing that had its own personality and patterns and behaviors, and just yeah. spotting it in the wild through the tree lines. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I played the one that you played, Free- Freedom. I don't, I don't think you did. No. What was the one? That... Freedom, free, uh, Freedom Unite Two. Two. So I probably played the one before that. No, the... you played the the original one that was on PSP, Whoa, the very first one, didn't really? you? Really? Yeah, I think it might. Yeah, have been, I, remember, actually. I remember you playing it, killing killing the Kutku for the first time. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, and likewise, I've got Mate, amazing no, memories no, of the that. The most recent one as well, that monster. Yeah, a lot, a lot of the monsters are uh, no, no, the Kutku's not in Worlds, I don't think. I, I haven't played for yeah. That was literally the last one that I played. I haven't played Worlds yeah. or anything. You should you should really try out a new one. Like it, it's really good. To be honest, I. I okay so a lot of people always talk about dark souls and bloodborne combat and just compare it to everything but in my opinion a- apart from the lack of meatiness i think that's the one thing that monster hunter combat lacks 
because it feels like you're just slicing through yeah like fruit and stuff all the time thing. yeah yeah you know you, you don't really feel like there's a proper crunch to your weapons apart from the hammer the hammer does yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you do that, that like good. upward smash the hammer it's just so good um but but the combat is very dark soulsy in in bunny ears um where it's like you know you have to learn the pattern of these monsters and as they've sort of progressed over time they've just got so interesting with the way that the monsters react to things if that makes sense like they they don't their their attacks are not straightforward by any means now like you know that they, they do that you know the animations might look like they're about to throw out this right hand paw and then suddenly they'll do a left swing with their tail or something so you know just there's so many things to learn for each monster and it's just such a phenomenal game but the main reason i put freedom unite 2 on here is because of the times that i played it with people yeah think, yeah so. i thought that might be one of the reasons why because like yeah it's, yeah you, you have like that game you really love and then then it's the memory of when you played it who you played yeah it, of course uh, yeah i mean if i went back to it now it'd probably be garbage i imagine because I mean, now that i've played worlds and you know the more recent ones on 3ds so, uh, like going back to that would probably be rubbish i don't think i'll be able to play it anymore because you have to do that weird claw technique with your hand because you only have the one analog stick on the <laughs> that was so uncomfortable <laughs> the pain well, what, what from your, that uh, was just... yeah. <laughs> all right yeah. should, should all right, move Danny on, boy dan uh okay um so i tried to vary my list a bit i tried to sort of have a game of different types so but this one this one's a series of games because i couldn't pick one from them that yeah, i preferred um the metal gear solid series mm -hmm. which i absolutely adored i thought it was one of the most unique i mean there are a lot of like stealth special agent you know undercover operative type military games at the time there was siphon filter and you had splinter cell type things God, siphon filter yeah yeah that was that was actually kind of good but yeah. nothing came close to the the imagination and the scope of Metal Gear Solid. It has some of the most memorable characters. The boss fights are beyond interesting. Like we were talking about this one the other day, Ben. Um, mm. Kevin, have you played any of these? No. So, <laughs> so the, the no. third one, the Metal Gear Solid Three Snake Eater, is set in sort of a jungle, um, Cold War era in a in a jungle. So it's all it's all about camouflage and sneaking around in yeah yeah the i think i saw stuff. ben play it did seem pretty good like the game like from what i saw but i think it's I probably you saw play four it's got amazing criticism um like great ratings and things but I, I certainly don't think it's for everyone but some of the boss fights the very first game that came out on the playstation one like this was so long ago had a boss fight where this this guy psycho mantis this floating kind of creepy dude with supposedly psychic powers could read your mind as the player and the first time you played this it was completely mind-blowing because he was telling you what sorts of games you liked he was like oh i see you like to play crash bandicoot from time to time and you're tripping out you're going what the hell how does how does this character know this <laughs> and then after a while you work out that they've found a way to have this character read your memory card and i've written a load of different scripts and things to associate with different games that you might have played and work out what you're That's interested brilliant. in and the only way that you could kill this boss was by unplugging your controller and plugging it into the second port of the console otherwise he would predict and read all of your attacks before you could hit him so there are all these really interesting mechanics and going back to the, the third one there's a boss called the end who's this super old dude in a wheelchair he's like he's in his 90s he's on death's door and he's this incredible sniper he'll he'll sneak around the bushes and this this is long drawn out battle it can take an hour where you're sneaking around and you're trying to catch the glint of his sight and you're having this crazy sniper battle but there are some other ways to kill him one of them is you can see him for a split second earlier on in the game and you can take a pop at his head and if you hit him just as he's been wheeled into the complex you can kill him and the boss fight never happens and the other <laughs> way you can kill him is by turning your console off putting the time on your console forward a few weeks turning it back on and he's literally died of old age <laughs> and he's just sitting oh, dead in the forest it's so good isn't it? but there's just so much imagination like it's yeah. it's such a brilliant game and i think kojima's i'm i'm that so interested job. to see what he does with death, <laughs> with death stranding like i think yeah. he's one of oh, the most yeah. genius weird minds in 
in video game history. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think I like I'll... you like you were saying about some of the aspects of it. Like I, I find the most interesting thing about it is the physical side because it, it must have been really one of the first get. Like, I can't think of anything else actually where it's like you you have to do something physical in the real world to to beat a boss. Does that yeah, make sense? Like, it often that's, broke that's so the, weird. the real world affects the game kind of thing. Yeah, it's so I find that just so strange. Like the fact that you have to literally go to your PlayStation, unplug your controller, plug it into the other port, and that's what like just stuff like that and having to restart your thing. And the um the thing on the first game where the um what was it with the the CD case. cooler yeah, the cooler ID, whatever it is, was on the a frequency. That was it. Was on the back of the the CD case. <laughs> but they trick you because they give you a CD case in the game as well. Yeah. So they say here's a CD, and then an hour later they, I'll check the back of the CD case. It's got the numbers that you need on it, and you spend yeah. ages like looking at this item in the game, trying to work out what to press, what to interact with, yeah. and it turns out the physical CD case that you've bought has you having a conversation, like a screenshot. I can, on the back I can imagine person. like 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 the like proper idiots of like. The, like play that game but think actually actually go to their real physical cd case to look at it because they don't <laughs> like, i can imagine it being one of them cases like like if you're if you're kind of like like normal minded kind of thing you just think in the game you think what's going on but then yeah. like, if you're really like not with it they're just catering <laughs> to the fools yeah. yeah you're just like oh yeah there it is <laughs> right yeah. cool uh kevlar okay uh i gonna go for one that i believe all of you have played which is bloodborne and you probably have it on your hey, list as well nice uh i'd say this is one of the mixes mixed between like the times that i played it and the game in general like i was terrible at the game uh <laughs> you're <not> terrible <laughs> uh, i mean i wasn't going yet but um <laughs> but like yeah just like the, the like it was the first time i'd ever played a game like that I didn't even know them kind of games ever existed until like, I played that, and it was just it was something that was just very new to me. I like I like the fact that it actually required proper skill and stuff for it, and it was it definitely tested my patience because I'm not a very like patient kind of guy. <laughs> and uh, playing a game like that, and You'd yeah, love definitely. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Was it? no, 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 <laughs> just. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 Kev. You can only play Cuphead if we're there. Okay. okay. <laughs> I have, I have to witness the rage. No, I, can't, I, can't, I can't, I can't let that slip by me. Yeah, that's a, uh, yeah. I mean, it's... and also like the scenery in that game as well is pretty. Oh uh... yeah, I, that. Oh yeah. One thing that stood out yeah. to me was the environments were absolutely stunning. Hmm. Did you? Nice. Had you ever played any of the Dark Souls games before you played? No, Apple? I didn't even know there was even a thing. Didn't know there was. Oh wow. So you went nothing. in completely blind. Yeah, completely blind. Oh, that's like, cool. it, was, it was it was just because like Ben's kind of uh, enthusiasm about it and like <laughs> like love of wanting to play it that kind that's of what uh, I do. yeah, they got me into it. And I mean, I've I've bought I bought Dark Souls three not too long ago trying trying to play it, but I'm so terrible at the game that it frustrates me. And I don't <laughs> like playing it, so it's a bit of a <laughs> which is but why it, I like that game because I like yeah, the but... game and the idea, but. Yeah, it's such a steep learning curve, but you do feel yourself improving. I think that's the main thing. Very, it's very similar to Monster Hunter. The whole you learn. It's a learning. Oh yeah, game. yeah, for sure. That, that's, yeah. Uh, that's the thing that I like about them. It's not just you're not just you don't just get stronger. You know, you play an RPG and you're like, oh, well, I can't beat this guy yet. You just go and grind until you have higher level gear or whatever, and then. And then you do it. We, I know Monster Hunter has aspects of that, yeah. But you, you, it's still a learning game. You could, like, you see people that can go through the entire game naked, just because they've learned how to deal with yeah. every single enemy. And so. and uh, what's it called? The like speed runs and stuff. That people yeah, just yes, man. Know exactly where to go and fall. And, yeah. Mm. Yeah, All right, good, Ben. Good choice, Benji. That's me. Um. Right. So my number four, because mine are in order. Yeah. Um. As opposed to everyone else's. Um. <laughs> Is Four, Ori wait, and haven't, the... you've only done two so far. Sorry, I'm confused. I'm lost track. No, the, no, I, I'm, uh, this is my second one. I'm last in the rotation. Before. Oh, you're doing oh, of course. Sorry, ignore me. Carry on. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, <being laughs> yeah, I'm counting down to, to one. one then. I thought you'd <laughs> skipped two. I was like, what? <laughs> um, yeah, it is Ori and the Blind Forest. Awesome. Which oh. 
is phenomenal. I, I can't... Oh, man, that game. The music in that game is... It's just... Like, haunting. And really soothing at the same time. <laughs> I, can't, I can't really describe it. It's really like a mystical. Yeah, a mystical. That's a good word for it. Yeah, yeah. But it's, 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 I pointed at the screen when I said that, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, mystical is a good word for it. It's, it's very... <sighs> yeah, mystical. I'd say mystical. Yeah, the music is just amazing. And even if the game was like a 4 out of 10, the music would bring it up to like an 8 out of 10. But the game <laughs> is not a 4 out of 10. The game is like a 9.5 out of 10 because it's so freaking good. It's the smoothest platformer in existence okay i'm sorry mario fans but i just the, the ori and the blood you just you just feel like you, f I, I can't, you kind of feel like you're a ball of goo like <laughs> just a, a, a lubed up ball of glue glue G glue whatever you want to call it i don't know <laughs> and you just sort of like slide around and just yeah. Oh, the mechanics are just so good the it's the perfect length if it was any longer it would have dragged a bit and there are moments in that game that are just... There's three moments in particular that are just insanely hard, but so... Rewarding? Not rewarding, just... Rewarding's not even the right word. Just the, the music and the scenery that's happening around you while you're doing it is just insane. Like, I can't, I can't, I can't even <laughs> describe it any more than that. It's like... They're like timed sequences where... I mean, I'll, I'll give you the first, basically, so there's one bit where you, uh, you go and, I can't remember, like, uh, light a light or something at one of the tree things, I can't remember the story very well, <laughs> um, and you have to basically platform away from this, this rising water, which sounds, which could have been done, re you know, really simply, like, you know, just water rising, but no, there is water coming out of everywhere like the trees are falling down around you and the music and it's everything it's just so freaking good man <laughs> um yeah or in a blind forest amazing it's also one of the most heartbreaking stories yeah. ever i was gonna but, say i've only played yeah. the first hour or so yeah um and it was the first platform game i played for years it was sort of the one that brought me back just because it looked so interesting and within the first like 20 minutes i was tearing up like it yeah. genuinely pours on the heartstrings immediately and it really yeah. impacts you so yeah that really stood out to me yeah yeah really 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 dope game man i'm gonna this um, might be a random question but what, yeah. why is, why is it a blind forest uh is there any reference to that? you know what <laughs> <laughs> i never thought about it like that I no, I no, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's something to do with the lights going out because it's like it's like this tree of life thing produces the light of the forest and it basically goes out. Okay, well that makes so, sense. Yeah, I guess yeah. Well, if that is the, if that is the word, why it's called a blind forest. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's that anyway. interpretation. That's yeah. maybe, maybe it was like the ends of like Lord of the Rings, just <laughs> to blind trees. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, Danny boy. Ooh, back to me um yeah okay so my next game is actually a vr game uh super Ooh. hot vr blew my freaking mind <laughs> i will never forget that gaming experience so i played it on the ps vr i think it might be the only platform it's out on no i'm wrong it's on it's on steam no, it's as well PC. So it's it's by PC, yeah but i think there's a couple of things about that game firstly it's it's a really interesting indie game, even in the 2D version. So if you haven't played it, it's the mechanic, the core mechanic is really simple. And it's that time moves when you move. So when you're playing it in 2D, whenever you move your mouse around or walk forwards or back, things start to move. And as you slow down and stop, things essentially just pause. So as one of these kind of low poly enemies, the, the, colors and the visuals really pop the enemies are bright red low poly the environments are basically all white but sort of realistic environments like airports and things like that um, they might be shooting a bullet towards you and if you just freeze and let go of all the buttons on the keyboard then the bullet will basically stop in midair right in front of your face and you can do all sorts of things at this point you can get a sword out or a weapon out and slap it away or block it you can 
catch things in midair as they're frozen. You can move really slowly and everything around you will move really slowly. So if you take that experience and put it into virtual reality, it's crazy because you're using your entire body at this point. So you can move your hands or tilt your head in real life and things in the environment in virtual reality will move at sort of the speed that you're moving. And there are so many moments in this game where I completely I completely lost track of the fact that I was playing a video game, which is kind of weird to think about because the characters don't so look you realistic. You just thought you were a serial killer for a bit. I don't know what you're supposed to be. I don't think you're a serial killer. <laughs> you're some sort of secret agent or whatever. But no, it was it was the fact that although you only have hand tracking and head tracking, I felt like my legs played a big part in it, for example. And it didn't really hit me for a while. Like, this game is so much fun. You feel like proper John Wick badass. You're, you know, catching things in midair and throwing guns at people and their guns flying out of their hand and you're catching it and spinning around and blowing off somebody's head and then catching a knife. It's it's completely nuts. And then you freeze and everything freezes. But I think the moment in the game that really got me was, it's kind of trippy. At the very start of the game, in VR, you're in a little office and you put a VR headset on in the game. So you kind of feel yourself going into virtual reality. And about three or four levels in, this text pops up on the screen. A new level kind of warps into view. And it says, test your faith or something like that. And it puts you right at the very, very edge of a skyscraper and basically tells you to look down and then subsequently jump off the edge. Uh. And <laughs> like, if you were just thrown into a video game and asked you that, you'd be like, yeah, whatever. This is fun. Let's just jump off. But I literally got a sense of vertigo in that moment and mm. panicked. And I was like, oh shit, I, like, I stumbled backwards and said, no, I ain't jumping off that, are you crazy? And it was, I think it was that moment that really made me appreciate how immersive that game is. It's completely blew my mind. Um, yeah, I will never forget that experience. Like, I think it's the, the game to show people. If they've never tried mm. VR before, VR, it's yeah. the game. It's, yeah, without equal in my experience. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think that's one of the moments. So if VR's VR done right, it's just epic. Yeah. Yeah, that game was. It's weird because that game was never designed for VR. No. It was like I could imagine them all sitting in an office, right? They're like, "Yeah, CPOT's doing all right. What should we do next, guys?" And then like a little news article pops up on one of their phones, and it's like, "PlayStation VR just announced," and they're like, "Holy shit, guys! Yeah. Super hot VR! Like that is just the." perfect game the mechanic is literally perfection for vr like, i can't think of anything else in vr that that would come close to that no. just the whole idea of the slower you move the slower everything else moves just that one simple rule yeah. makes it that good in vr and like you were saying about that um the vertigo thing uh, i had i think vr in itself is just quite immersive if that yes. makes sense like that game is particularly immersive yeah but like I had the same thing on Skyrim VR, where I think I was playing it with you, Dan, and I went to the top of the highest mountain I could find and then jumped off. And then uh, as I hit the floor, I sort of like bounced in real life. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. I I fully agree. Kev, have you played Super? Uh, don't think so. Okay, cool. We need to uh, let's ar arrange, let's that. arrange that. I think. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've got a PlayStation. John's got the VR. We'll sort it let's out. Let's arrange that. That's <laughs> yeah. Like you can't miss it. Like yeah, it's the only game. It's it. the only game I played quite a bit of VR, but it's the only game that's given me. I think they call it um, full presence mm. or something, where like my body was in the virtual world. Like there was no separation there. So yeah, yeah. I don't and want to spoil was... anything else, but there's some amazing levels in that as well. One in a. Uh, in a, a club of sorts, but I don't want to spoil that. People will know what I'm talking about if they've played it. Yeah, yeah. All right, Kev, go. Uh, okay, I'd say, oh, I don't know what I to leave for like the last one or so. Uh, this one, I'm going to go for Halo. Also, Again, I love Halo. another one of them like, kind of like node ones compared to like the, the more indie type games and stuff, but I'm, I'm more of a the, the box office type person. Um, Halo 1, I played that game just endlessly with my brother. Um, yeah, I, I've I remember the first time I ever played it was around a uh, one of my sister's mates' house actually, and I saw the game and I was like, 
that this game is just looks epic. Now we ended up getting it. Um, yeah, like we, uh, me, uh, me and my brother ended up getting it, and we just I, honestly I've repeated that game just endlessly amounts of time. And it's, it's, uh, talking it's, Halo, Halo One. Halo One, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I mean, I mean, like, like Halo Three as well. Like, I guess yeah, everyone kind of, you know, that's, that's that's up to one of them. Like probably one of the best games people. Um, people say that anyway. One of the best games ever made, but mm. yeah, Hello One definitely, uh, definitely sticks in there, both for memories and just at the time. It was just such a good game. It was revolutionary. It was yeah, just at the time, yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Like, and I think it was very much one of their very first like online ones as well, because obviously like Xbox original online. That was, yeah. that was the Xbox Live's debut game, wasn't it? Yes. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, and I mean, and what a game for it to be as well. Like. You know, in terms of in terms of like shooters and stuff, like they, I mean, yeah, they yeah. could. I mean, I think um, I mean, when Xbox 360 first came out, one of their first games was I can't remember what it was, but it was just terrible. And you, you compare that to what Xbox Live and Halo. Came yeah, out I think it, it says a lot when Halo is still very much playable now. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, you and, could totally play Combat Evolved instead. Oh of fun. yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, so, people, like, and the, that, that like, says again, a lot. Mm. And like the, again, like a lot of games like that, you know, you think are that good. Like the music is just known oh, by so many, yeah, yeah, so <laughs> many gamers out there know the music and that, like, oh. you know, yeah, exactly. You just uh, <laughs> we got the rendition of it right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one, two, three, all, 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 out, all out of sync on Discord. <laughs> uh, right, yeah, cool. that was that's my one. Great cool. Choice. Right, we're going to move it on slightly quicker now because I've realised we've been chatting for like half an hour already. Um, cool. My next one is the Resident Evil series. There's no way in hell I could pick yeah. one of them because oh. they are all dope as hell, apart from six, which we shall not talk about today. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Deep so. Feelings. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Yeah. 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 Um, so, Kevin, how many times did you complete Borderlands One? Uh. Two. Two. Even. Sorry. Uh, like three times, thirty three. Right, rookie numbers. You need to step those numbers <laughs> up. All right, Resident Evil four, thirteen point five times. All right. Why the point five? Did you just like? Because <laughs> I completed it thirteen times so I could get a million gold. I think it was a million. Whatever the <laughs> max amount of gold was, so that I could buy the best weapon on the game. And then I bought the best weapon on the game, and that was it. Because I I sort of started the next playthrough, and I was like, but now what am I doing? So I stopped. <laughs> But that game is is kind of horrendous now. If you look back at it, it's kind of like watching a Jason Statham film. <laughs> it, it's like an, just an action game. Like there's barely any horror apart from those like reanimator things and the which were just creepy as hell. But it kind of completely re kickstarted whatever the rejuvenized the the series. <laughs> rejuvenized yes um because one two and three were great but it needed something so that it could enter like the next gen phase if that makes yeah. sense and resident evil 4 smashed it out of the park and it was dope on wii as well right was it? um yeah mate, the... playing that on wii with the eight the controller with the nunchuck and stuff was uh, dope <laughs> it was so good about that. um the first yeah, time well, you're a right. of a chainsaw runs at you in that game is terrifying <laughs> yeah it is yeah there's so many moments so but like that's just resident evil 4 and the reason I couldn't pick one because the first three were amazing for the time, yeah. And and Resident Evil Seven and Resident Evil Two remake, they are back on form, man. Like Resident Evil Six was pretty much god awful, mm -hmm. and then they then they, they you, you know you know a company knows what they're doing when they they know that their game is bad and they just completely revitalize oh, that's right not rejuvenize that's song. the one revitalize <laughs> the uh, <laughs> I wasn't going to uh, correct you I was going to let you <laughs> shut up <laughs> <laughs> yeah Resident Evil 7 was just a horror masterpiece yes bloody terrifying so good Resident Evil 2 remake was also a horror masterpiece but was just a masterclass in how to remaster a game I think it's going to be very difficult to find any remasters as good as that. The only thing that might come close is Final Fantasy VII, but we shall have to wait and see. I haven't played it yet. Resident Evil 2 remaster. Yeah, it's, it's mad. It's so good, man. I've never uh, even played the first one, but that is just like... Yeah, it's so good. Right, Danny Boy. Um, I'm going to save 
the best till last. So this one was really hard to pick between Divinity Original Sin 2, an Ooh, absolutely nice. phenomenal classical RPG, and The Witcher 3. Um, I think in the end, I'm going to go for Divinity Original Sin 2. Uh, there are some moments in Witcher 3. Yeah, well, tell me about it. I love CD Projekt Red, like, with a passion. And I think it's a brilliant RPG with some of the best writing. But I think gameplay-wise, and in terms of it being fun and new and fresh, I think Divinity Original Sin 2 captures that tabletop RPG, that Dungeons and Dragons experience that we've all been looking for since mm. Baldur's Gate. And yeah, I just love the freedom that you get in that game and the dialogue, the fact that everything is voice acted is beautiful, the world's great, the the different approaches, the different puzzles. Yeah, um, absolutely brilliant game and I think I'm probably going to pick it up on the Switch and play it for a third time. Hell yeah! And the Switch Steam crossplay is dope. Yeah, well. I want to talk about that a little bit later, actually, once we get around to the yeah. news, because I think that's um, that's a big deal. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, yeah, fully agree. Amazing game. Played tons of it, and your reasoning for not picking Witcher Three is my exact reason why Witcher Three is not on my list. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's that the, yeah, the gameplay is just a bit. The fight. I found the fighting a bit lacking. Depth, yeah, can see, yeah, see that. Yeah. It's uh, it's yeah. The the fluidity of it is quite nice, but it needs more depth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Uh, Kevlar. Uh, this is one uh, I don't think anyone would ever have guessed. It's oh, Crash God. Bash. Crash, Crash Bash. Bash. <laughs> I remember right. just honest that game again, again. You know what? A lot of mine are more memory based and just who I used to play it with. And I, I used to honestly, I used to play this with my mum. <laughs> and like we just played this game just endlessly I, I remember one time on a uh christmas eve i think it was and um we went to blockbuster and we bought a a horror movie and like i, I was a lot younger at this point and like i didn't i didn't like it i think i can't remember what it was but it was like weird sluggy things but didn't like it and mom was like i'm gonna go upstairs and play crash bash and just played this game just all night and not only that, I recently got a uh, a, like a PS1 uh, converter thing on my computer, like a couple em- of months emulator? ago. Emulator, yeah, that's one, yeah. <laughs> converter. Uh, <laughs> Dad's triggered. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and um, and like downloaded that, and like, well, I, I remember one time coming back from from work, and I'm like, I was just sitting there playing my game, like. <laughs> Oh yeah, I remember you just saying that. Yeah. It and, like, and it was just, it was so good. It was. Just... Yeah. What was Crash game... Bash? Was it a racing game? Yeah. No, yeah. No, 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 no. Oh no, 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 it's not, is it? No, no that's the um... Crash Team Racing was a racing game. Oh, that's right. No. So what was Crash, Crash Bash was, was like, like an arena uh... one. Yeah, it was like an arena one. They had like different, yeah. like where like, you know, you have to like protect your own goal and stuff. Oh. Um, there's, there's one loads of mini like, games, basically. Yeah, basically, ton of mini games, and I just I remember going that. up and up and up, and then once you complete, once you kind of complete the game, you then face against like harder AI and then extra hard AI and stuff, and it just completing that like 100% in that game. I remember just hours of just repeating the same game over and over and over again. Just yeah, awesome. But yeah, yeah, it's nice to have those memories associated with it. That's that's really sweet. Mm. Mm, it's like um, thingy with us in it. Uh, is it Tekken? Mum used to play with John. He, was it Mortal Kombat? Mortal, uh, no, Mortal Kombat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I my mum like hates games pretty much. <laughs> but yeah. but I remember her playing that and get well into it. It's a good memory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's always me now, isn't it? Yes. Me. Uh, right. My number two game is Hollow Knight. Of course. Saw that coming. Yep. Because. It is amazing. I'm not even going to go on about it that much, to be honest. Like everything about it. it's a, a but solid the humans out there that have no game. idea what it is, never heard of it. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, Are there? We're going to do a section later on. <laughs> I've never we... heard of it. <laughs> we're going to do a section oh, I've seen later it before. where we talk about what games we've been playing, and after many, many, many attempts to convince me to play it, Ben has managed to convince me to give it a try. So. Uh, yeah, yeah well, we'll get you your opinion it on it later. So far yeah. later. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so I'm not going to go on about it much. It's just amazing musically, art style, gameplay, 
even story in a way. It's just, yeah, phenomenal Metroidvania. We'll talk about it later. Uh, Danny Boy, your final one. This is potentially, if I was going to rate them number one, um, firstly, because it's absolutely stunning, uh, a work of art and created by a pretty small studio called That Games Company, or That Game Company even. Um, oh, I know it. And secondly, <laughs> yeah, I know you know it. And secondly, because the memory I have of playing this through the first time really has stuck with me. Uh, one of the most emotional gaming experiences I ever had, which sounds stupid, but uh, the game is called Journey. Uh, it's been out for a while now. Um, and I do want to talk about this a little bit. I'll try not to waste too much time, but I just want to like try and explain the story and what happened to me in that game. Um, <laughs> because... get your tissues out, okay. <laughs> Everyone's going to be like, what the hell is this guy on about? And I'm going to be sitting there bawling my eyes out, telling you about. Yeah, so, so basically, um, I don't want to describe how it looks too much, but it's really stunning you start sort of in a desert there's, there's no dialogue per se uh you interact with the world by moving around sliding jumping and you can like beep and boop and make little kind of chirps um and the only sort of indication of what to do that you're given is a big mountain in the distance and it's quite obvious what you're supposed to do you're supposed to make your way to this mountain and you know the environment's are stunning it's got one of the best sound video game soundtracks of all time in my opinion uh, so it's really immersive and really kind of beautiful and artistic and everything flows together really well and at some point during the game uh, there's a chance that you will meet somebody else playing it so it kind of presents itself as a single player game but you there's a chance that you'll bump into somebody else and it becomes a co-op experience so i'm maybe an hour into the game it's not a very long game um, not even that maybe half an hour into the game and i see a figure standing in the distance and he's jumping around and kind of doing what I'm doing. And I'm like, oh God, this is somebody else. I'm going to sort of try and say hello and communicate with my little chirps with this dude. And I get to him and he's got this like crazy long um, cloak on. And a cloak indicates how much you can fly or glide. So you're encouraged to grow your cloak for as long as you can. And if you die, you gets chopped off and all this kind of stuff. So this guy's basically a veteran uh, at this game, knows what he's doing. And I start following him around and, and we go on this little adventure together and we're sort of sliding around and getting through all these dangerous, terrifying environments and just on this this crazy journey. And you become really attached to the person that you're playing with. You have no idea who they are or what their name is or you don't really have any other way to communicate apart from maybe drawing patterns in the sand and making these little noises at each other. And you know, you're constantly turning around to check on each other to make sure the other one's okay because otherwise it's kind of a desolate, lonely world you kind of rely on each other and there's all these little mechanics like you can fly for a bit longer if you're touching each other and you can help each other out by being close and it encourages that kind of co-op behavior and this moment in the game gets quite dark you slide down into these deep caverns and this gigantic kind of robotic ancient snake type terrifying creature just bursts out of the ground and i have like a mini heart attack and this guy's a little bit ahead of me and he just gets taken out right in front of my eyes. And I've been playing with this guy for an hour <laughs> and he gets completely wiped out. And I spend, I kid you not, I spend the next hour or so looking around. I'm checking every corner. I'm looking underneath things. I'm going back the way we came. I go pretty much back to the start of the entire segment of the game because I desperately want to find this guy. I feel really attached to him and I'm, I'm starting to ball a little bit here. And I spend the next like, half an hour after i've given up all hope of finding this guy and ever speaking to him or finding out who he was this person i had a connection with i spend the next half an hour playing alone and i'm like this is this is really sad i really missed that guy and um <laughs> yeah and about half an hour later i bump into somebody else and it's a it was a really bizarre experience because i felt like the first person that i met in that game was my mentor he was kind of showing me all the little ropes and teaching me things in a kind of unspoken way and the person that I met had a really short cloak on, which means he's new to the game and, you know, isn't very experienced. So there was this, just this moment of student becomes mentor type yeah, thing. Yeah, like passing the torch on. Sort yeah, of thing. exactly. And uh, it's really hard to describe, but it's well, I think you did a very one good of job. <laughs> the most beautiful games I've ever played. Uh, I don't think anything has come close to it since in terms mm. of its artistic 
beauty. Um, yeah, there's no other and way to put musically it. Musically as well. The Gold. soundtrack I still listen to regularly. Just stick it on yeah. YouTube and put my headphones on. I mean, it, 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 again, it, it says something when it. I had a theme on my PS4 which played the Journey music. Oh yeah. And you know, I've played PS4 for about five years, and it was my theme for most of that time. So usually, after five years of listening to one song you'd get completely sick to death of it <laughs> but but nope nope still love it so yeah it's beautiful yeah. stunning game yeah good Sorry. choice okay going for a bit heart-wrenching story kevin's just crying <laughs> right now <laughs> <laughs> it means a lot to me okay all right kevlar go okay it's the last final one isn't it yeah boy your top yeah. one yeah so i've uh this is, this is a tricky one God, I swear to God, if you say FIFA, I'm done. <laughs> I'm well, done. Okay, for me, I'd say it is. It's out of FIFA, World at War, or League of Legends, because they're the three games that I've played most in my entire life. But out of all three of them, the one that I get, I, I'd say that I probably like the most out of all of them is World at War. All right. Um, just because. And for reference, everyone, that Call of Duty World at War, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's like... Out of all the Call of Duty that's ever been out, I'd say 4 is probably better, but I have played 5 so much more. I had so many good memories and times on it, and I was sick at the game, which helped. <laughs> um, Dan, do you remember that time where we were discussing what, our, what top 5 we should do, and we said top 5 games that we've played the most? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, no, no. But okay, it's like it's one of them things. Uh, that no, I know obviously, mean, yeah. like I must like the games if I play them that much. I mean, not necessarily. I've played yeah. a hell of a lot of League of Legends. That <laughs> 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 does not mean I like it that much. Yeah, I say that FIFA as well. Like I've played that. I've, I've played since FIFA 06, and I mean, I'm not, I'm not even going to be buying it this year because I'm just sick to death of just how literally it's the same game over and over again. Um. <laughs> He's I know, finally yeah. realised. <laughs> yes. I, I know, I know it's the same game over and over again, but it's just not. It's not the point. But anyway, um, well, yeah, World War. I'd say is my. Uh, yeah, definitely, it was definitely up there. With a lot of memories and stuff. I think it's definitely my favourite Call of Duty game, at least in terms yeah. of the memories I have associated with it. It was also the first one that introduced I know, gore, like you could blow people's yeah. legs off and stuff, which really just added. It sounds like horrific, but it did add something to the game. Also, when you compare it to all the new ones and stuff, it's just head and shoulders above it because it's just uh, maybe not well, the most recent one because I've not played it. But well, later on, <laughs> yeah, we'll be no. talking about that. So Spoiler stay alert. tuned, folks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Anything else to say about World at War, nah. the second best Call of Duty game? <laughs> all right. Cool. <laughs> so my last one. <laughs> Luckily, we really don't have to talk about it much. And I realised I made a bit of an error earlier on by not mentioning it when Dan mentioned it. My top one is The Last of Us. So, hey. <laughs> yeah. So, ju- uh, yeah, I've already we've already spoken about it. It's amazing music again. Amazing everything. It's a, a ten out of ten. You cannot fault it whatsoever. Yep. The combat is amazing. I mean, to be fair, it's probably like a nine point nine nine out of ten because Ellie can be really annoying sometimes. She grows no, no, up she oh, through the game. She suddenly no, grows up. No, she's not annoying, is she? It's um, it's the the AI is weird. That's it. Where Ellie can just be standing there in like the middle of a room, and the clickers are just like, not the clickers, the the other ones are just like walking through her. Yeah. <laughs> but apart from that one, not point, not one off the score issue, an amazing, amazing game. I mean, I'm a big fan of horror games in general. Anyway, I mean, even the garbage ones. Uh, so this was just right up my street. Massive zombie fan. Best film of all time is Shaun of the Dead. So <laughs> this, so yeah. British. I am. I'm quite British. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so cool. Yeah. So that was just sort of a, a way of people sort of knowing what sort of games we like. I guess the next thing would be just to. So between me, Dan, and Kevin, we we have pretty much all of the modern consoles right yeah yeah because so Ke- kevin plays xbox one me and uh, i have a ps4 a switch sorry kevin plays 
God, this is awful, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Kevin plays Xbox One. And we, we all play PC. There you go. I see the way to do it. We all play PC. Kevin has Xbox One. I have PS4 and Switch. And Dan has a Switch. So between us, we can cover all ground, pretty much, apart from yeah. VR in terms of games. So, yeah, we, we do... we will be covering a fair few games. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, uh, we have set up... Um, ways uh, that you can give feedback to us uh we will be doing it every week obviously the first few weeks or so whether or not we're going to get that many questions and stuff will uh will obviously be a thing but if you want to um do want to give us a question you can go uh, on twitter um the at praise the pickle Woo. um it's one word <laughs> all praise that's probably yeah and we do have an email that you can use if you want to send any questions and stuff. Uh, it's praise the pickle podcast at gmail.com. Awesome. Thank you. Right, so on to the news. We're going to cover, like, oh God, this is going to be a long podcast, isn't it? Um, yeah. Hopefully, people like long podcasts because this is going to be long as hell. They can right, pause it and come cover back later. It's the... fine. <laughs> we'll just cut out all of Kevin's bits, it's fine. Um... <laughs> you know what? <laughs> It's going to be one person, right? <laughs> Even better, we'll, we'll be fair. <laughs> yeah. um, right, so, yeah, news. So we're going to cover a couple of weeks worth of news because a lot's happened the last couple of weeks and obviously this is the, our first show, so we're going to sort of, yeah, go over a couple yes, of weeks so worth of interesting stuff. Apologies if you've sort of read about this already or, or heard it, but it's something that we've been waiting to discuss with each other, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... First thing, uh, this is definitely not in date order, so yeah. First thing, uh, the UK Parliamentary Committee called the Department for D- Digital... Oh my God, it's like a tongue twister. Department for Digital Culture, Media and Sports. Is that supposed to be sports? Report on immersive and addictive technologies. That's what the report is called. Um, basically, a report was done this week by that department that is talking about loot boxes and whether they should be monitored by the gambling association whatever it's called in the uk um so loot boxes have always obviously been fairly controversial not fairly pretty controversial mm-hmm. over the yeah. last sort of few years um and they had recently there was i don't i think it was in the eu i don't think it was uk but there was a oh no i think it was uk actually uh, there was a inquest into into loot boxes and ea <laughs> came back with describing it as surprise mechanic yeah that Woo! was terrible isn't it it's just, it's just terrible the biggest load of shit of <laughs> yeah um so yeah i mean to be fair the gambling association at the time basically couldn't do anything because of the the technical definition for gambling is that the prizes need to have monetary value so they couldn't they technically call it gambling but they don't technically do they <laughs> well I, I, okay I, I guess it depends on how you look at it i mean like i think some games they do for example in, in fifa and counter-strike fifa yeah. they do essentially have a monetary value because with whatever you get in the packs and stuff you can sell on their market and with that you can actually sell your coins to other people although yeah. it is actually banned and you can get banned from uh, and, and, and have your account banned and stuff from it it's still a way of getting money it is still something that mm. you know so i guess it obviously depends on you know where you're but it, it doesn't depend though does it because that that goes across everything because everything works with with accounts now you know everything is associated to your account so everything has a value rarity creates value yeah so you know a really rare skin on league of legends is going to be worth probably worth money so and you can just sell your account which has that attached to it okay so yeah it does I understand technically that, have yeah. A monetary value doesn't it because yeah i don't i don't know i, I just it's a very roundabout way of doing it because it has monetary value, but it's not monetary value. You, like you, you can only sell it, but in a weird way, like. And it's not yeah, being sanctioned yeah. by the company that. That's that's the issue. Yeah, the is that they and, they're not providing the service to resell. Yeah. They're, they're just they're and saying, oh no, like you can't your... resell, but everyone does. Mm. And it's not like you're reselling that specific item. You're reselling something mm. else. Yeah, yeah. Um. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, I read something on a uh, Reddit the other day. It was again, it was very like FIFA. It was it was to do with FIFA, but he wrote a um, he wrote a piece um, about like about uh, like packs and stuff and saying that it's it's like becoming a like like a very very big addiction and it's becoming a you know and it was actually used I, it might have actually been used by that commission like, i know i know he said that it was used by like in, in, I, know, in I think i think it, yeah they did mention a few a few um reports about particular cases in the in the report yeah yeah i mean like, i think i think from what i know fifa is the biggest money like way that ea get their money from yes like they um yeah just so much and uh another report i also saw was um that uh a mum had like well, this like kid had basically spent about three grand on xbox i think they called it xbox add-ons i think it was just an in-game uh might Digital have been items. yeah yeah, just white and some stuff. Um, yeah, and it came to yeah, she paid about three grand because her kid got got a hold of it, and I guess in that you look at it being like he bought the ad like the add-ons and loot boxes, one maybe because of the addiction, but then you also have to possibly look at the fact that, um, well, the mum shouldn't have given his kid. Them. <laughs> yeah, what is, what is that about? How have yeah. parents not learned yet? Like, come on, you. Just, but it's you can't, it's not only the parents' say. fault though, like. Oh, the, the, sorry, pro- the problem with anything, the problem with anything new like this, because loot boxes are a relatively new thing, digital goods, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, with the lack of regulation, you do get people. The companies are not; it, they don't have to stop people with systems. I don't know what I'm trying to. I know what I'm trying to say here. Um, oh, I so, yeah, as in like they don't have to put things in place if, to stop people yeah, buying. Yeah, exactly. So if, if the yeah, government yeah. turned around and said, look, this is, needs to be a carefully regulated system, you can keep selling loot boxes, but you need to be really, really careful that only adults, verified people, can but can spend money on it. That 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 this leads sort of to the fact happen. that it would have to have some kind of age restriction on it, and it isn't. Yeah, which but I then agree it with. isn't. I mean, like, I mean. Imagine you think in Fortnite I had an age restriction of like is it M for mature or something they're using games, mm. Mm. Like, uh, like that's ridiculous. But then, uh, I, in my opinion, it's almost like if you give your kid that credit card, you tell them what's what, or you put a restriction on yourself or something like that because it's your money at the end of the day, you're in control of it. If you if you give your kid the freedom to spend it, then it's your own problem. In in this case anyway, I think it is. This convenience, yeah. isn't it? You have your details saved onto your phone, and you just press a button, and it buys an app or it buys a thing. Yeah. Kids don't realise yeah. that they're actually spending money, so they just press the button and go. Oh, look. But then you should have you should have control over it. You should be watching what your kids do. <laughs> yeah, man. but that's it's partly like, should, the parents' fault. It's your responsibility. The company's fault. The company should also have some sort of thing in place that stops kids from just pressing OK. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's not. It's not. Yeah, it's not yeah. their problem. Like that. That bit isn't their problem. The problem is. No, but it, no, but it should be because it, because these people are vulnerable. Okay, yeah. you you have to you okay. Think of it: if you put kids in the same category as people with gambling addiction, they 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 should be responsible for making sure that people aren't spending stupid amounts of money on their game, because they know that it has no monetary value, and they're just tr- people are just getting fixes from it. That's the point. You look at Blizzard, okay? Blizzard, Overwatch. I I I, I have a very I have a very addictive personality, so I I go through phases of getting. I mean, Kev, you know how many skins I've got on League of Legends, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. I, you know, the second they brought that crafting box thing into it, Jesus Christ, man, I just went ham bone. I, I, I probably spent three, four hundred quid on, on League of Legends. <laughs> you've like you've like played easily. that game for really half the amount of time as me, and you know, you've probably spent about three times yeah, as much no, as it's, me it's on that game. completely <laughs> ridiculous, but you just get that fix from it, right? And But then you look at companies like, in fact, I can't actually remember whether it's Riot or Blizzard. They're the two that I had gambling problems with. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> And one of them stops you. <laughs> one of them stops you once you reach a certain amount of money. I yeah. I feel like it might be Riot, to be honest. I think it's League of Legends um, developer Riot, where they, I think when you spend something like twenty five pounds, they say like that's enough for today, basically. Yeah, they give you like, that, what, yeah. Why can't every company do that? Well, because yeah. it's just that fix in that moment, and the, the I mean, it's been scientifically proven with gambling that. 
the gambling motive and the gambling mentality is i oh, just want the next one is going to be the one where i win the next one will be the one where i win and that's what leads people to spending stupid amounts of money but so you, if they had it where it was just 25 pounds on a day then, shouldn't you <laughs> yes i i i i, I take that <laughs> that's I fine that, so the, i no, think just, companies yeah. need to restrict it personally but the weirdest thing about this i think is that it's it's illegal in this country at least to market to children using the characters in a TV show, for example. So it's illegal for you, for the people that make SpongeBob SquarePants to, inside the show itself, to promote a product and sell it to the children because of mm. the way that their brains work. They don't understand that it's an advert. It, it, to them, it's, you know, it's, it's important because a character that they respect and look up to is telling them that this is something that they need. But video games are doing that all the time because these kids are playing these games and the characters in the games, like the game itself, the thing that they're immersed in is telling them to buy this thing. If you had a break in your video game session, like every hour and a completely third party ad came up for a completely different product, in a way that would kind of make sense. But the fact that the product that you're using is trying to make you spend money on it, in a child's mind, that's a really hard thing to distinguish you know, from, from an advert, from an extra thing than from part mm. of the experience itself. Like, there's something really weird about that. My, my, my bank has actually just put a really interesting system in place. It's, it's an online bank called Monzo, brilliant company, um, where you can stop yourself from gambling. So you can press a button on your phone and say, look, I only want to spend 50 pounds on gambling transactions. And it, and it knows what a transaction is gambling related. And in order to turn it off, you have to contact them explain to them, look, I, I need that band turned off because for whatever reason, I'm planning to go out at the weekend or whatever. Um, and then you have to wait 48 hours before they lift that restriction off. So, so good. Isn't it? So many more companies should really be considering that. But I guess it's just a, a matter of who's greedy. and. You know what? Not. You know what? I feel like that, though. That I feel like that's almost like a marketing technique. Well, I feel like a marketing technique marketing. where maybe if you know that you have a problem, then... You know, we have that that in place for you for you to come to us. It'll make other people, people feel more secure, just, Whereas other other people might just see it as like all like like the, the gambling type places, like you know games and stuff. They just see it as you know we don't care about that part of it. We just want we're just here for the money. Like a lot. But, but, I know what you're saying. Like, buying, like, like a lot a lot of companies but... they 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 do not really like obviously the, a company is a company to make money and like a lot of the time i i mean ea I, I, ea are the biggest example for it that, and they I, and they are one of the reasons that i don't like them for it is the fact that one they could not give a rat's ass about the people that play this game they don't mm -hmm. care about what they want they don't listen to their fans ever i mean I, that, that situation that happened with um is it battlefront the one that came out and oh yeah yeah, like, and, and, like, their response to it was just so awful, and you, it mm. just shows that they're just, they have no, no want to do anything for their fans and stuff. In their defence, they did actually fix the Battlefront situation. Okay, yeah, they eventually. fixed it, but after, after a lot of, up, you yeah, know, like, the amount they need, of, They like, needed uh, to be publicly lynched before they did that. Yeah, I mean, I did, I'm pretty sure they got the, the, the biggest downvote ever on Reddit. For a comment. Oh, it did. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it yeah. did. Yeah. Like <laughs> it was, jokes. it was that bad, and, and people hated it that much that it became such a big deal. Yeah, and they it's, had no it, choice. Yeah. So, and mm. like, I mean, like you say before with the the Monzo thing, like again, in my opinion, it is a good idea, and I think people that do have these problems are good to go to that. Like, it should be a good place to go to because it helps themselves. Monzo get money, however they get money, and they do their bit. So yeah, it is a good. Yeah, it's good. I think it's very hard to just be like, oh, the company's just using it for marketing. Like, yes, obviously, they are. <laughs> they're, they're a company. But it is still a helpful thing, you know? Like, I don't understand why video game companies can't... What what I think the main... Sort of this sort of do this as a sort of closing thing. We all think it's bollocks, right? There needs to be better... It needs to be better monitored. Um... And I mean, I'm speaking for both of you. I presume you agree, right? So far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Um, oh, where's it going with this? Oh my god. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Brain fart. Uh, uh, oh yeah. Um, okay. So th th these, they're not going to lose out on that much if they put restrictions on. 
this is the thing that bugs me the most yeah. because the the issue like these cases we're looking at the three thousand pound for xbox add-ons yeah for fifa whatever it was that 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 family's life could be ruined because yeah. there's no restrictions on this thing and how much money are EA, for example, actually losing in this situation? Not very. It's not. You know, it's a very small percentage of people that get carried away with this gambling. You know, like I've still managed to spend four hundred pound on Riot w- with the restrictions on there. You know, there's no. All it stops is those minor cases where some people just spend ludicrous amounts of money. Yeah. So why can't, I don't understand why it's an issue doing it. It's I not. Th- I I don't think they'd even see a dent in their paycheck if they did it. I think the oh, issue is quite straight straight <laughs> Yeah. The, the issue so is whales. So you know the concept of a, a whale, right? Oh, yeah, whales. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, yeah. There, the there are a very, very small <laughs> percentage of people <laughs> that spend a fortune on these games, and they don't mind doing it. They just have the money. You know, they're, they're, they're well off, and they can afford to spend five yeah. grand on a stupid mobile game just to be the best on the server. So by putting the restrictions in place for everybody, these companies are losing out on the whales. And a lot of these mobile companies are alive because of the whales like if you got rid of those they wouldn't exist which in my eyes is great because mm. most of these mobile games are complete dog shite but yeah but why can't they, they put these restrictions onto certain people then why can't they put these restrictions onto um younger people and like have an opt-in thing like you said with monzo why can't yeah. they have an opt-in thing where people know that they have a gambling issue for example i know i have a gambling issue right I, I would probably, if I was getting well into Call of Duty, for example, and it had loot boxes in it, it would probably be a good idea for me to be do that, you know, do that same process now, so that I don't fall into it. Yeah. Have you signed and up? And a lot for Monzo? of people are. Say that again. Are you 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 have Monzo, aren't you as well? Yeah, but have it doesn't matter because I have I have free bank accounts. So. Oh my <laughs> lord, my uh, uh, he's real that, addiction, uh, isn't that he? That ain't <laughs> stopping me, Kev. Right. <laughs> You'll find a way. I'll find a way. I have PayPal credit. Okay, that's where all. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I, I bought all of my loot boxes on Overwatch. <laughs> right. No, anyway, no, yeah. You know what I find as well, though, as well, is probably not a good thing. Is like obviously like the uprise of YouTube and stuff, and watching YouTubers do all this kind of stuff. Oh yeah, completely. Very yeah. influential and yeah. kids wanting to do it all because yeah. they they see these people getting good things. And you think, hey, why can't yeah, I get it's that? Like the the whole thing with that guy owning the Counter Strike gambling website. You know, yeah, 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 I remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's let's move on because we're gonna we can talk about yeah. this for hours. Um, right, Chucklefish. So the the <laughs> love <laughs> Chucklefish and moving on. Um, ch- <laughs> uh, so Chucklefish, the company that made such classic um, modern retro hits, such as Stardew Valley. Yeah, Stardew Valley. <laughs> And Terraria, mm-hmm. I think they made Terraria. Yeah, probably. And yeah, similar, no. so basically they um, had this sort of volunteer program thing where where they basically asked people to volunteer to help input into one of their games, which was called Dan. Uh, I forgot which one it was. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, so, laughs> um, very yeah, so, very good. So, um, <laughs> journalism um, <laughs> i think it was study valley but i might be wrong no it wasn't it was the space one. Oh, space bound space starbound starbound, starbound that was that's one. right yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, um, yeah okay. so they they basically asked volunteers to help with starbound and loads of volunteers did and essentially lots of those volunteers are coming out now saying that they were exploited and that they should have been paid for their work i don't know if i agree with this because there are a lot of jobs where you need to work for free to get your foot in the door to get something on your CV. You know, there's a reason work experience is a thing. And I, so I don't think I agree with this. And there was never a contract saying that they should pay them. In fact, okay, they, yeah, they if it's openly not a contract, said that it was. Here. Yeah, but a lot of people disagree. Well, I'm sorry, but if you, if, if you don't sign a contract and if you go into that with no... Like with with like an idea that you're not going to be getting paid. Like surely, surely if you do a piece of work, you'll know if you're getting paid for it or not. Yeah, that's kind of where I stand. Like, and if you don't get paid, you don't get paid. It's, it's your own, you know. You shouldn't have volunteered for it then in that way. I think after the game was received pretty well, I think it sold quite well. 
I think it. it sold, might... I don't think it sold as well as meant to meant to sell. I think it was I don't, meant to it be a lot amazingly, it but it, it, it was certainly in the profit. You know, it, it did okay. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I think it probably would have been ethical and pretty nice of them to at least contact the volunteers and give them a little something just to say like thank you for your input. I mean, I know their names are in the credits and all that, so I guess that's one thing. And again, it's it's the experience that's a big of doing thing. that. <laughs> it is a big thing, especially when you're trying to breach the industry and a company like yeah. Chucklefish has put you in the credits of a game. You put that on your CV and that's that's a really good start. Mm. Um, obviously, hindsight's twenty twenty, but to solve this problem, they could have done a bit more of a gesture for these people. But at the same time, you know, these people have come out two years later. Yeah. It's, just, it's like, they just trying to milk Chucklefish as well. for everything they're worth. Yeah, if this game didn't do as well as it did, I don't think they'd be they'll be piping up. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. If it was yeah. a failure of a game and it was received terribly and everyone hated yeah. it, these people would be completely silent. They mm. wouldn't be saying a word. But at the same time, there is that whole thing about, uh, like digital rights, kind of. So like, if you make if I if I make a piece of work, just like 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 a piece of uh, uh, coding for a website. Who owns it? Well, that's Do you know like, what I mean? Yeah, unless unless I sign a contract saying that you are now the owner of that bit of code, um, what? How, how? You know, should I not be get a proportion of what the website is bringing in? You know, so in this case, in terms of the game, if for example, say one of these volunteers made all of the music for the game, which is a pr- pretty big portion of a game, you know. Um, should they not be getting a a you know a segment of the profits of what this game is making because they've had a big part to play in the creation of the game? Well, so, the thing is, they they there was a contract, wasn't there? And but what the volunteers are saying, was. I think I might be wrong, but from I'll, I'll my memory, it on, it, I think they were given a contract, which made it quite clear what they were doing. That this was a contribution to the game that wouldn't be paid or anything like that, but. What these kids are coming out and saying is that they were taken advantage of because they were young and gullible and naive and that the company took advantage of them, you know, just because they were young. And actually that contract was either unlawful or unfair. Yeah, no, you're right. There, there was a contract, yeah. But that's the thing. These kids need to realize that when you go into the work environment, in, into I'm saying kids, that's probably a little bit rude of me. They might not all be kids, but I'm assuming these are like work experience people and people that are just starting out. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was so the, the it stemmed from a guy named Damon on Twitter. Um, da- Damon, Damon, <laughs> Damon, <laughs> um, who was sixteen at the time. So, yeah, so that that kind of adds up. I mean, they need to just wake up and realise that if it says in the contract you're not going to get paid and that everything you contribute is belongs to the company, it's as black and white as that. It, it's as simple as that. You can't turn around and suddenly say that this was an unfair contract. You signed it. There's nothing illegal about it. Yeah, you might be 16 or, or whatever. Or maybe you misunderstood it. Or maybe you thought that they would change their minds one day. But just go back and look at the contract. I'm sorry, but I think it's as black and white as that. I think these kids are just trying to milk Chucklefish. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what I'm getting from this situation, to be honest. Um, but, I mean, according to Damon, I don't know if this is true. And I highly doubt it is. But he, cause he said... That hold on, I'm just trying to find it. Um, blah, this blah, is blah, Damon, blah, blah. right? Damon, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, that they were further enticed with the promise of possible employment at Chucklefish in the future. Yeah, but every company does that. Yeah, of course they do. Yeah. Every yeah. company says, "Come and work for us, and if you do really, really well, we might employ you." They're, they're, they're just leaving the door open. They're not. It's either that, or they shut the door on you completely and say, after after four weeks of working here, you're gone. That's it. End of story. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> like it's very true. It's totally. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I mean, I I quite like Chucklefish as a company, to be honest. So I've I, I don't know I, much I, about I, this, them. This 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 news saddened me. Well, I mean, I say I like them as a company. I really like the games. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know what they like as a company. They could be like EA. So. Well, they're they're know. a relatively indie company. So. Um, yeah. 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 All right. Uh, okay, on to the next one. So, Telltale Games are back. Yay! Yay. I actually haven't played Woo-hoo. any of their games, but, you know. I've played a couple. They're, they're alright. Um, so, this, th- I mean, Telltale Games went down like a like a lorry of bricks. Yeah. Um, a sack of lead. 
<laughs> and they basically just overnight was just like, and we're best. And all of their yeah. employees just went, but that was it. And it was a really horrible situation because, you know, they had however many hundreds it of employees. It was genuinely it was just... distressing to, to hear yeah. about what those guys went through because I can't remember yeah. where they were based, but it was a relatively small town somewhere. And yeah. something like 50 to 100 people, however many it was, was suddenly made unemployed out of nowhere. And they had nowhere yeah. to they go. They lose so much money. But because they kept fucking throwing shit out, didn't they? It was just yeah, like, it was kind of oh, we'd release like they released like twenty games a year or something, man. It was completely bonkers. Most and they of had all these licenses really well. that they must have been spending a fortune for, you know. I just don't think their business sense was great. I mean, as I a they... businessman myself, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think they had change management like, as well. Anyway. Yeah. So, um, but basically, yeah. So the the new story, sorry, um, is Telltale Games are back. So basically, the name Telltale Games and supposedly the company have been bought by two investory business people that I don't know the names of just now and they essentially want to restart it which is great that's it I I hope they have reached out I'm sure they have but I, I really do hope they've reached out to the former employees and given them another chance because yeah, I they're... lied I lied through through my teeth there Dan that's not it so uh... <laughs> what um, I lied. I, I I lied when I said that's it because that's not it. The story gets worse. Oh. Um, so Telltale Games are back, but they are not offering permanent contracts to any of the ex employees <sighs> of Telltale Games. Yeah, this but is where it gets a that bit makes sense, fishy. Though. They're they're offering contracts, what? but they're 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 going to be like zero hour contracts or something. Yeah, they, yeah. they need to back themselves up a bit, don't they? Well, yeah, yeah, which makes sense. It's just rubbing. I don't know. I just it it feels rubbing like the on the outside it's kind of rubbing salt in the wounds a little bit. It's just like, oh, remember that company Telltale Games that just completely threw you under the bus? Do you want to come back and then we could potentially throw you under the bus again? Yeah. You know, it's just a bit. Yeah, not great. And apparently, a lot of them will be going back because, like you said, from a small town, harder to find jobs, relocating well, stuff like that. They might they go had, back. I can't remember how many it was. If it was say fifty people, that yeah lost their jobs there was literally not 50 positions in the gaming industry in the entire area some of these people had to literally uproot and move like halfway across the country like five six states over just to get another job like their mm. lives were completely destroyed by it i just want to give a shout out as well at this point to a youtube channel called no clip who did a phenomenal really really insightful hour-long documentary into telltale and the closure and how it affected all the people that worked there um and no clip produced some of the highest quality documentaries about the gaming industry. Um, highly recommend that if you're interested about what yeah. happened. But if you're not interested, three bits of information that make this show how fucked up this situation was. 250 people Whoa, were, that's lost way more their than job. I thought. No severance? Is that the same as like um redundancy that pay, pay that we get here? Redundancy, yeah. 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 Uh, so no no redundancy pay and mm. health insurance gone in oh. nine days <laughs> this whole thing happened in nine days that's devastating yeah so 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 many people were just hopefully. upset about their game not being finished as well they were oh no we're not gonna I get know, to play the last chapter a shit, man. all those people you, yeah i know and you get the because everyone was complaining because they'd already paid for it yeah but, and they weren't gonna get their money back that was the issue and it was like you you are you seriously that low that you care about the 15 pound or whatever at first <laughs> whatever you've paid for walking dead when all these people's lives have been pe you know temporarily ruined at the minute but it's just yeah, yeah. and they actually it's... finished it as well credit to them they actually gave them what they wanted eventually i believe no they didn't a different company did <laughs> oh but it was a the different same company people. volunteered to do it and i think it was most of the same developers though i might be wrong yeah yeah they, they took they took all the people from, they from gave Telltale, them jobs. yeah yeah, yeah. They, they wouldn't have done it without pay, to be fair. I mean, they'd just of be course. completely destroyed by Telltale. They're yeah, like, yeah. oh, we'll finish your game, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool, yeah. Awesome. Uh, last oh. bit of news from me. So, Nintendo Ring thingy. Um, oh, the Nintendo... fitness thing. Yeah, so... Oh, dear. This looks mad. What do you mean, oh, dear? I'm well excited for this. It looks so good. It just reminds me of the Wii Fit all over again. Yeah, which, to be fair, was good for about a month. Uh, but... The thing that have you seen much about this, Dan? Or no, I saw the like the basically teaser uh, trailer. I've I've heard of it. No, no. Okay, about first it. things first. You guys have to watch the full trailer for it. 
it's it's honestly I you know how much like I said I love my horror films this was one of the the scariest things I've ever seen <laughs> the the actors are just they they are terrifying <laughs> they are, I can't even I, I just they stare into your soul and they smile <laughs> this creepy smile and they talk like they have a gun to the back of their head and it's just <laughs> oh man it is horrible to watch but it looks really interesting okay so you know what, what do you guys know about it that it's a, a ring that the joy cons I've, I've seen what it looks like that's it yeah me too pretty much okay so basically it's you've got your two joy cons and one goes into a ring which is like a, a resistance ring sort of thing and the other one straps to your leg so it kind of vaguely monitors your whole sort of body i guess um but the interesting part about it is that it comes with two games pretty much or i think it's all on the same disc but two discs it's not disc is it cartridge um two games called i think one's called ring fit adventure which is basically an rpg so you play an rpg where you have to do fitness moves as attacks okay and i just think it sounds really interesting like i mean like, it's, an, it's, it's an engaging way to get fit i guess if people yeah you know, but if it. you think about it it's like it, it, it essentially they've created like a workout program but in rpg form that's well, kind of cool. I yeah. think it's well cool. I think for I think oh, it, whatever you guys suck. I mean, I, like, I, I, it's very, <laughs> very like I think it's like grind esque, isn't it? I guess it makes you yeah, yeah. You do work to get further. I guess, yeah, I guess yeah. It reminds me of those. I, I think you want to do more. You, know, you can get those treadmills and like uh, exercise bikes that have games built into them. Like you have to cycle away yeah. or run away from zombies or yeah, oh yeah, the zombie runs yeah. or something <laughs> like that. I know, I know, on um, what is it a uh, rowing machine? They have the little fish game. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It reminds me of that sort of stuff. Yeah, but I think it's a, like a fully fledged RPG by the looks of it. Be interested so... to see how it stands as a game, like without the gimmick of the fitness side of it. Like if it's actually yeah. a decent immersive game, then yeah, I'm, I'm all for that. Yeah, and um, but that that that's not where it stops, which is what I really like. Is they're, they're obviously you know Nintendo are very clever and stupid at the same time. <laughs> yeah. You know they they bring out Nintendo Labo VR, and it's like, great VR. There's there's no strap on it. No no no, no <laughs> strap on it. You have to hold it to your face. Ah, oh, so immersive. Um, yeah, but what they, so they're quite clever in this sense where they've basically created two games. Like I said, so the RPG one, which gets the fat people like us, like me and Kevin, not Dan because you're a twig. Um, <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> gets us the, the fat nerds wanting to play it and get fit that way which is great but they've also have have the quick play mode of it which is your standard sort of we fit style i'll do eight crunches i'll do this you know just like a standard yeah. exercise workout sort of thing which sort of gets to the other demographic you know basically all those thousands and millions of people that bought we fit you know those people will be like oh yeah cool a workout thing great i'll use that for a month and then chuck it in a bin um <laughs> but yeah i just thought it, it was quite cool that, interesting. that it's an rpg and not just a another quick play like j just a quick play thing you know yeah i think i think most things that nintendo announce are interesting to say the least yeah um yeah, yeah, yeah. the only thing but i think i'm more intrigued missing... by this than labo <laughs> what's missing actually no i've got to say what's missing is a way to measure progress but I guess they could do that with things like reps. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. that does work. Yeah, because it, it, but it's it's not because it's if they they're like core exercises, aren't they? Where it's, yeah. um, I I imagine it might start easy, just be like I'll oh, pull the flex band apart, sort of thing, to kill this slime ball, and then like bosses might be like doing loads of things in a row. Yeah. Sort I'll, of increase I'll the be intensity that. of it. That, that sounds interesting. Yeah. All right, that's, that's all I've managed to conjure up from the last couple of weeks. Mm, beautiful. Go on, Danny boy, or Kevin. Go on, Kevin. We'll, we'll mix it up. All right. I, th I know. I know one of my uh, my little my little bits has got something to do with it. Like Dan's got a bit more to do with it, but it's to do with cheat engines that uh, seem to become a uh, bit of a bigger thing these days. Um, well, I say these days. I mean, they've been around for a long time, but. Oh, yes. The BBC did a, uh, <laughs> a survey recently of 
uh, saying that a third of gamers use cheat engines to enhance their play. What about you and... guys? That means one of us has used cheat engines. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who it is. I wonder who, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, apparently, like the people that actually like make these. Uh, like the programs and stuff for it, they like make thousands and thousands of pounds a month from doing it. Like, just I think it's crazy it's the fact that, that people would that try and like games are meant to be fun, man. Yeah, I don't, like... I don't get it at all. Like, maybe, maybe Dan can describe it for us, considering one third of us have used cheat codes, <laughs> and it's quite obviously him. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, obviously, this was many years ago when I was teenager and full disclosure here um yeah i used to both sort of rig up my own little hacks and cheats and things and i also have paid for some in the past and the ones that you pay for are significantly better now i was never really one to cheat on first person shooters and competitive games but there were certain sort of online rpg games where cheating could both reduce the amount of time that you needed to play the game to keep up and also give you a bit of an edge in the economy and I guess when somebody offers you an easy shortcut to win the game in an online game that would otherwise sort of milk thousands of hours of your life to get to that point, it is quite enticing, you know, um, mm. for a teenager at least. Now, I do totally understand the, the damage that it can cause, and particularly in MMOs and RPGs, it mm. can completely ruin economies. You know, there was there was an issue way back in RuneScape, for example, where somebody found a way to duplicate the red hat or the party hat, I think it was called, which was a super, super rare and valuable item. And obviously, supply and demand, this person had like thousands of these things, made a very quick buck. And then when people realized that they were suddenly everywhere, the economy just crashed and suddenly they weren't worth anything anymore. And, <laughs> you know, the whole the whole well, game had to adjust to it. But mm. um, I don't think we're ever going to get away from cheats. I don't think there's... I don't think, I don't think there is either, they're yeah. going to leave. I mean, you remember having cheap code books back in the day? GTA cheats. What about cheats. those, like... Well, not the code books, but what were the things that used to plug, plug Game in? Sharks and stuff like that. Yeah, Game Sharks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I mean, like you said, though, single-player games can be a bit of fun. You know, it's basically like modding now, isn't it, I guess? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's, yeah. yeah. But, but when, online when, games when it, when it affects just... other uh, other people, then... Other humans. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and uh yeah that's 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 when it gets to the point where you're a bit like uh, just you know well yeah place. with competitive games as well becoming such a big thing esports and, and whatnot there's certainly a huge uh priority that needs to be put into fixing this problem um so obviously rainbow six siege is one of the big games at the moment woo woo. yeah fucking awesome game i love that so much um and they've had a serious issue with, with hacking and cheating recently. Uh, in particular, um, I think this is console specific. I don't know if it happens on PC. I don't think I've ever experienced it. Um, but DDoS or DDoSing is a thing, you know, distribute. What, what's DDoSing? Distributed denial of service. Um, so basically, players that were losing a oh, game, yeah, yeah, particularly yeah, yeah, yeah. on the fence, I believe, would use some sort of service to flood the server that they were playing on with, with packets and crash the server. So, you know, the, the attacking team would be basically rubber banding. There's no way they could possibly push. They'd just be kind of teleporting back and forth on the spot. Eventually, mm. they'd be kicked out. Um, and it meant an easy win for the person cheating. And... There's a couple of issues with this. Firstly, the people that are doing this are doing it through online services. So there are companies out there that are offering a DDoSing service to players, saying, pay us a bit of money and we will DDoS your server. Just give us your username or whatever it is that they give them. Yeah. Um, and one of the issues of that, one of the many issues of that, is that each game that you play, this is being fixed soon, um, but each game that you play previously in Rainbow Six, you play on a server with two other games. So there are three games happening at any one time on each server. So not only is your game that you're playing being affected, but two other games completely unrelated to yours are oh, also being they? DDoSed and shut down. So every time somebody does this, they're potentially affecting, what is it? Uh, eight people, 10 people per game? So potentially affecting yeah. 29 other people or whatever it is. The maths is probably all over the place there. Um, no, that's right. <laughs> 
but yeah, but Ubisoft are really, really cracking down. Not only are they going after the players that are doing this, they're actually taking some serious legal action against the companies that are providing these services. They're putting one game per server now to at least try and minimize the damage. Um, wow. And yeah, they're going all out with, with the Banhammer now. And I think it's about time. People have Band been calling <laughs> for it for, for ages. So no, I, 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 I love, Ubisoft. I really respect Ubisoft. Yeah, they're, they're, they've, they have released some god awful games. Hell yeah. But, like, they're. You know, their, their whole dedication thing that they have going on now is nice. It's a nice, refreshing breath of fresh air, you know? Like, the whole division came out not good. They stuck with that, man. That was their baby, yeah. you know? That Same with Rainbow Six. When that came out, it was buggy as hell and didn't get received that well to be honest well, it was, yeah people, it was very could, different people to the could see the potential yeah yeah and everyone had the issue of the whole e3 versus mm-hmm. <laughs> thing comparison standard which was quite yeah um but you know they've they stuck with it and they've made a great esports style out of it and now this stuff's happening and lots of other companies would just be like ah that's effort but ubisoft like nah well i think they're doing it because they've built a thriving from what i can yeah. tell a pretty much positive community throughout the game you know you, you all you have to do is watch some footage of well yeah there's always a bit of toxicity but just just yeah. watch some of these live streams and esports events and you can see that people genuinely love this franchise so yeah credit to them for supporting it yeah are you yawning How no. dare you? <laughs> <laughs> i had a two-hour nap before this i don't know how this is happening i'm sorry that's all right um yeah, no, I, I I agree. Uh, yes, cool. And like like you were, like you were saying, Kev, um, so people are making thousands of pounds a month from it. But like Dan said, companies, there's uh, companies that do this. Yeah. Like they probably make a bloody fortune just by making people's lives in misery. Mm-hmm. It's bonkers, isn't it? Right. On to the next one. Go on, Kev. Um. Okay. Well, I've got a like a little page more of like the, like games going to be coming out. So I don't know if we want to move on to some other news and then kind of jump onto that at the end of it yeah uh, yeah i mean is there anything on there that stands out that you want to talk about or uh just... let me have a quick look are these things that have been um, announced this i week? mean like the the whole um I, I i have a lot with like uh loot boxes and stuff especially with fifa um other than that I, uh, actually no one of them does it does tie into it um the sega Genesis Mini is coming out. Ooh, another oh, another mini yeah. series. Uh, awesome. And it, yeah, which launched in North America today, I believe, or yesterday. Um, yeah, and it has it's just, it's fully adaptable, playable. It's got all like yeah, you can play on whenever you want. It's got forty two loaded preloaded games already on there. And that's I it. You never a, get any more. You can't put a cartridge into it. That's it. Those are the, four, the no, only forty two games you can ever play. Even it's even the like. I don't know, like nostalgia, or just like even 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 being able to just go around your mate's house and just play, yeah, just with them. Just sounds like I'm not sure yeah, how I feel I just, about all that to be honest. I just find it so not even gimmicky, just kind of pointless. Those mini- I think it's, it's almost as if the people that came up with those ideas have never heard of emulators. Oh, they have. Always, <laughs> but but oh, they they bloody use them, didn't they? Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. uh, the PlayStation One one uses PSX, isn't it? <laughs> Um, yeah, and I just find it. Re- Don't vape on the mic, Dan. Um, <laughs> I thought I muted. I just, it. Sorry. No, you didn't. <laughs> I find it really odd that they would release this because it's always going to be lacking in comparison to emulators. Because it's just like emulate, it's free and you get everything. Or get this mini for a hundred quid and you get forty games and that's it. Yeah. So. It's a strange thing. Uh, for me, it, it would it's kind of a nice thing to have on a shelf if you're a collector like as an ornament something to look at in your game station or whatever but I yeah know. yeah I, I don't feel like people are going to pick it up and play it for more than christmas day or whatever yeah it's, it's definitely a christmas present isn't it yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it it's going to do well at christmas which is probably why it's been released at the end of the year mm. but that's the plan yep right go on oh. Kif. uh okay yeah this as well um I get. I don't know. If, it's not really news. But it's more just. I guess it's kind of news. Just uh, uh, Minecraft. It's like rise in popularity over the past like month or two, and uh, I saw quite an interesting stat about it being um. 
last year or this time last year there was an average of about 20 million people per month playing it whoa that's still yeah. really impressive this year yeah. it's 112 million jesus, jesus christ that's nearly a hundred million more people this like for, like just how how a game <laughs> that is literally about building blocks has gone f- just had such hey whoa 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 yeah, whoa whoa do Kevin, not it's a do brilliant yeah. game. oh my god do yeah i know okay I, i've played the game and i enjoy the do game it's, i like condescend it <laughs> minecraft players all right um well, I think it's obvious that we can thank Pewds for that. I think PewDiePie is. The, I, I think the he one helps that... a lot of it, yeah. But yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I pretty know, much add like... his 100 million subscribers. <laughs> 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 but I do, feel like, yeah. I do feel like that he kind of started playing it because there was a slight increase in popularity. Because I, I, there was Maybe. a, um, I know, I know a lot of, uh, there was like a, a, a um like streams and stuff happening every single Friday. There was like a big old competition and stuff happening. Um, like in Minecraft, a lot of like big YouTubers and streamers and stuff were getting involved, and then from that, I think PewDiePie jumped on that, and I think uh, is it uh, Ninja? He went on it as well. Did he? So, you okay. know, you you got the biggest biggest YouTuber and the biggest streamer both jumping on the game. Like, yeah, just the surge of it has just been. It shows how influential uh, just... they are, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's also a really cool stat. That is a mad stat, though. That is one crazy. year, yeah. one like ninety million more people. That yeah. is, and it's such an old game as well. Like mm. that is insane. Yeah, it yeah, says a lot about the the quality of the game itself as well, though. And yeah, yeah. Completely. If it was just, I mean, if if everyone watched, say, a streamer or a YouTuber do a playthrough of some sort of story game, like a let's play, most other games that would be it. There'd, there'd be no reason for that player to pick up the game and play it themselves. But obviously, with Minecraft, it's a unique, subjective adventure of your own. And yeah, there's something special about that. So credit to, to Notch. Mm. Credit Very to Notch. It is Notch, right? Maker. Made it? Yeah. Uh, never heard of him. Um, never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, cool. Go on, anything else? Uh, other than, like, the games that have been released soon, getting released, that was nothing... Uh, Alright, go, go, go through them. Let's get this game. Let's go through them, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, quick, probably, uh, I said the quick fire, quick game, fire. probably the, yeah, the quick biggest fire. one, Borderlands. Hey. Reviews and stuff about it has been... You know, they've they've said that, like, they've they've kept their, like, gruesome, funny ways about it. Um, and, like, I mean, uh, it's IGN, Forbes, GameSpot, XGN, all raved about it, saying it's just amazing. Especially yeah, for the fact that they, 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 they keep the same characters, but they also they adapt those characters and stuff, and you get more background of it all. But lots of technical issues, apparently. Can't be bothered oh, to get into oh, that, really? but okay. apparently the frame frame rates are garbage. <laughs> That's disappointing. <laughs> like, yeah, so on PS4 Pro and Xbox One, they struggle to run it at 60 frames at 1080p. Oh, okay. So there's a lot of issues with that, but the actual game itself is yeah i was gonna to say phenomenal. i feel like yeah <laughs> but yeah in terms of um I, I, to be honest though like with most games these days it's probably just gonna get patched yeah. <laughs> it'll be fine i'm trying not to read apparently too much it, about it looks it. great but but it's just got a few issues that's the main reason i haven't thought about picking it up yet is because i'm waiting because even on pc apparently it's got some issues with performance so i'm just gonna wait until they sort of fix that and then and then dive into it i reckon hmm Yep, go on. Um, and for any of you lovely FIFA fans out there, probably already know by now. But... All seven of you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I saw that there's on about a hun- on Twitch anyway. They've got like a hundred thousand. Yeah, it's a very thousand, popular game. Uh, uh, yeah, very very high amount of viewers watch at the moment. Um, but yeah, I mean like they've. I I feel like like from from what I've I've seen of it, they say it's very uh. The same stuff with EA again. They don't really listen to their fans about it all. Mm-hmm. They <laughs> <laughs> the first voice crack. That was a, that was a classic that was voice crack. That could be our intro. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, they don't listen to their fans. Uh, they they make consistent errors and mistakes and stuff like they, they don't they don't really have many people doesn't seem like they have many people looking over what they're releasing to the public so they have a lot of like what, you, wait hold on hold on you, you mean to tell me that ea 
<laughs> releasing a unfinished product. I've never, never heard. heard of them. No, no, it is, it's not an unfinished product. It's, well, I guess if you're releasing more stuff, but like where they put new stuff on every it single is, day, and that it's, it's it is it's, it's it's EA man. Like you look at Mass Effect and Andromeda unfinished, literally like to the point of a, a, a joke, a practical joke as to how bad it was when it came out. You look at Anthem again unfinished there was no content in it it was it was they were like oh we've we've made a roadmap and you're like oh great cool now you know i bought this game and you said it was being released on this day you didn't tell me that it, the release date was nine months of which it was getting released um there's just so many examples star wars battlefront 2 battlefield 5 ev- everything they release is unfinished now that this just that mm. whole concept of release it unfinished we'll fix it later it's just it's yeah, so it is very much like that and not only that as well is what has uh, quite a bit of stuff has come with it is that where like I said earlier on about faith of being the same game year in year out yeah there's been a there's there's even um like images and stuff in like the far backgrounds of the stadium that even say FIFA 19 in a FIFA oh. 20 game <laughs> that's brilliant meaning that they they do they literally use the exact same platform that is. That's like the best case of copy paste that I've seen. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it obviously so shows good. that. Yeah. That's so good. I've always. You know how many people out there say it's literally the same game each <laughs> year, but different characters. The characters, my God, it shows how much of a FIFA fan I am. Um, and and, and, and that, that is just priceless. <laughs> Love it. It's a reskin without the skin. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that guy's getting fired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, go on, next one. Uh, and then, okay, so, and then I got the games that are to be coming out. One came out today. Nice England. Uh, oh, actually, no, t- uh, two games came out today. One was Zelda. Oh, yeah, today, I one. forgot that was out. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 20th. This is a big day for Switch. There's quite mm-hmm. a lot of stuff coming out today. Um, so, yeah, from what I've, what I've uh, heard of the, like, the people that have. Like already played it and stuff. They're, again, I think it's up there with like the more recent Zelda game. Well, all the Zelda games. Obviously, the Zelda fans just adore every Zelda that comes out. But it's meant to be <laughs> uh, again just another incredible game. Not I haven't played Zelda like well really that much at all. But f- yeah. from what I've heard it, and and what I've seen, it just looks incredible. Yeah, me me or Dan will probably get it and then. Um give it to the other person so we can both play it at some point mm. uh, uh, looking forward to that one it's, a sort, it's sort of a one playthrough game by the looks of it but it, it's definitely one to watch yeah mm. uh, and then another one which I, I don't know if you know it's more, more like a comical game but I've, I've seen quite bits about it called Untitled Goose Game oh, oh I can't yeah, wait for that looks that looks so, so good fun. yeah that's <laughs> out today is it, so, oh man! Yeah. What a unique um, concept. You play as yeah, I know. You literally you play as a goose, and your goal is to annoy as many humans as possible <laughs> in the most creative ways. Just by like, Kev, this game is for you, man. Yeah, I've seen bits of it. It does look absolutely yeah, brilliant. I can't wait for that. Yeah. Apparently, it's quite yeah. short. The only thing I've heard about that is that it's only like a yeah. two-hour playthrough or something. But mm. the people that have played it are saying that whilst it leaves you wanting a lot more. It does it in a way that's also kind of gratifying. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm glad it didn't overstay its welcome or anything like that. Yeah, there's a lot. I'm of glad I pissed off that guy that much. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go do it again. <laughs> yeah, go on. Uh, and then uh, the, the final one, I guess, is like, it's not really. I haven't, I haven't really seen much about the game, but it's probably the bigger one that's coming out soon, which is coming out on the 24th, which is called The Surge 2. Wait, that's how on the 24th? Yep, from what I've seen. I thought it was like next year. No, I'll, 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 I'll look at all like games that are coming out soon. I saw the search. I I, I am really curious about this actually, because the first one looked phenomenal and then it came out and it flopped phenomenally, and uh. And it what so phenomenally? You cut out. It it dropped. It oh, flopped, flopped. flopped even. Yeah, it flopped. Flop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. I'm hoping that they have fixed it because it lo- the, the concept of it looks really interesting. Yeah, apparently the uh, so Dark Souls in from, space. That from what I saw, yeah, from what I saw, it's <laughs> it's basically like a hack and slash, very gruesome type mm. game, and whereby you like 
essentially like if you if you want to have something from a character or someone you're like you know you're killing you just like rip off their limbs and stuff it's very 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 gruesome yeah yeah uh, i mean yeah it looks really good E3 and apparently good. one of the one of the better things that they like out of it is it's very good character progression which uh, cool. you gotta like in a game because <laughs> yeah yeah in, in that sort of game yeah yeah um Okay, so cool. yeah, Anything that's else? all. No, that's that's all. My, that's all my news I've got. Sweet, cool. Awesome. That's actually quite interesting. Um, do do that every week. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, there's so many games that come out now. Like like you just said about the Surge Two. I had no idea that that was coming out this week. No, yeah, I didn't either. Okay, yeah, I knew it was I'll close, but I didn't realise it was that yeah, close. Yeah, just get an idea of what's out and yeah and give listeners an idea cool. as to whether we're actually going to play them i'll keep that as my um, part you know what I'll, I'll i'll stick to all the gaming bits and then you guys yeah, can cool. go more of the techie Contro- type thing. controversy yes. yeah <laughs> um, all right danny boy it's all you now uh okay a couple of these are pretty quick fire i think ps4 yeah. has sold 100 million units making it the fastest i believe to Woo! sell that many i don't think it's that sold more if... than any other console but it's certainly reached 100 million before it quicker than any other console did yeah that that means if one of pewdiepie's every one of pewdiepie's subscribers had a ps4 <laughs> there you go yes 100 million <laughs> is the big number at the moment it seems um, yeah. a pewdiepie fan in the building guys so yeah, well done boy. sony i think that's i think, yeah. that's, I think that's really promising not, not um <laughs> well done for us. <laughs> go on sony Woo! uh I could do better. and i think it, I, i'm not going to get into the whole console sure. war thing but i think uh, they won oh, this generation best. no they they won <laughs> they, they had better more better they exclusives but that's, absolutely that's... oh yeah demolished. definitely they uh, spider-man <laughs> was just on another level uh was it god of father god of war god of father, god of father. <laughs> i don't know where I, I think i had, a, I had another spoken, spoken <laughs> like a true xbox fan god of father <laughs> god of father i love it <laughs> <Okay>. father <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I haven't played God, that yet, so actually. Good. I really want to play God of War. What? Yeah. Have you not played God of War? I haven't had a PS4 oh. for years now. Alright, you can borrow mine. Yes. <laughs> Have you got, got God, of God of War as well? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Cool. Right, um, next one. Couple of other things. Uh, Tokyo Game Show was recently, uh, in the last week. Um, tons and tons of announcements. I'm not going to go through them, but if anybody listening wants to go check it out go go check out some yeah. of the shows uh, that, that was the death stranding stuff wasn't it there uh yeah i think it was actually i think that's yeah, where they showed so that, that big, yeah, bit they had a big part about that so if you're interested in death stranding have a look because we are kind of oblivious to it on purpose because we want to play it yeah with a blank i haven't slate, watched so. any of the new stuff about it at all I've yeah neither have i completely skipped it um on, on purpose like i said we're, we're great journalists and we're yeah uh, <laughs> um what else have we got so i want to talk very briefly about divinity original sin 2 the switch release uh, i believe it's the only game that has steam switch cross save which in my opinion is a really big deal because mm. yeah but what that means is people who and it's a big game so people that have got 50 60 hours plus on the pc version can just pick up where they left off on the go and then when they're finished on the go they can go back upload their save data again and then continue from their pc i think that's a pretty revolutionary idea and the fact that valve yeah, have allowed completely. them to do that is promising and i, I really I'm saying, hope other companies follow basically like an old school memory card yeah take, <laughs> taking your memory card to your mate's house and picking up where you left off yeah pretty yeah, much. yeah, yeah it's, it's mad just you like... can't even do that nowadays it's just like taking your memory card out of your PS1 and then taking it to your mate's house, plugging it into his GameCube. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I just kicked in my head that you said put a PS1 to a GameCube. And I was like, oh? And I was like, oh, I get it now. I get it. Yeah. It's cross platform, cross save. Uh, awesome stuff. Larry and Studios want to watch. Baldur's Gate 3 coming soon. Cannot all wait Hell to see more of that. Yeah. Um, Everyone talks for years about World of Warcraft being the best MMO, the biggest MMO, and there were tons and tons of MMO releases that tried to be the WoW killer. You heard about it all the time. You know, Guild Wars was going to kill WoW, and uh, Lord of the Rings Online was going to kill WoW, uh, Aeon Online, etc., etc. And we've seen tons of MMOs. Oh, RuneScape. And what's Ru- RuneScape came before WoW, um, yeah. but yeah, so technically WoW killed RuneScape. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, 
have backfired. Well, it was one of one of my favorite games of all time. I think I think it's a wonderful experience um, to go through it. When it first came out, I lost touch with it many years ago, and I just think it's really funny how the thing that killed WoW was WoW, and WoW Classic has come out, <laughs> and it's essentially the vanilla WoW experience, the same experience that people had when they first loaded WoW when it first came out. Um, which for some people is just going to be a nostalgia trip, and for other people it's going to be something new and fresh in a weird kind of way. Uh, and interestingly, when, when somebody first suggested this publicly in a questions and answers section at one of the BlizzCons, I believe, Blizzard turned around and essentially said, uh, that's not what you guys actually want. You think you want it, but you don't, and we're not going to make it. You know, just stick with the modern WoW and, yeah, don't ask that question again, basically. Um, and then people pushed and pushed for it. It's come out. And the queue times for some people have been sort of five, oh, I've seen eight, that actually. 12 yeah. hours. It's it's crazy. Every single server is full to the brim. They, they obviously didn't uh, they it, had prepare no for idea. that, did they? They had no idea how popular it was going to be. No, um, but it is obvious that people didn't want it. So, you know. Yeah, obviously. You can just, yeah, you yeah, just, yeah. just look at the numbers. It's clear. The numbers yeah, maybe maybe they, maybe they only set up like <laughs> maybe they only set up like one little measly server or something expecting like 100 people to log in <laughs> they were like oh shit yeah they they yeah were completely uh knocked over by the reception of that um i hope it continues to do well i don't know how it's going to pan out in the future i don't know how they're going to do expansions and things i think it has got yeah. a limited lifespan but i'm glad people are enjoying it um because yeah some the of only my part, best yes, the only part i don't it. understand is the long the longevity of it like i don't because surely if they're like, okay, this is the new WoW, and then isn't this just like them resetting and starting again, and then That's it's just going to advance again yeah. back into the same WoW? So Are they going like... to start sharding servers off so you have some people that stay in Classic, some people move to, to Burning Crusade? Yeah. We'll, we'll see. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm glad it's doing well. Uh, Apple Arcade announcement. Um, I think that was today or yesterday, uh, very recently. Uh, it, was, it was last week, it was sort of like Tuesday or something. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. So essentially, Apple Arcade is a streaming service, kind of like St- oh, it is a streaming Stadia. service. You can also download the games and play them locally ah. offline as well. Um, but I think the the thing that they're marketing at the moment, I think when it first comes out, it's going to be iPhone and iPad only. But they're going to be bringing it to Macs and Apple TVs, and you'll be able to sort of put it on standby or close the game down and then continue from where you left off on one of the other devices that you have. <laughs> so... <laughs> what, was that? Mad. Yeah, what was that noise? <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, I, 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 was, I was more like a surprise, like... Geez, shocked. Man. Completely yeah. shocked. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I, honestly, I, I, I did, I, I've never even heard of it. I didn't know it was even be a thing. And so it's kind oh, cool. of, uh... I'm glad I get to reveal it to you. Um, I don't have any Apple devices. So it's completely useless to me. Yes. I've got, I've got all the Apple devices. Oh, damn yeah. it. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> um... Yeah, I think it's really interesting. The the launch lineup is really impressive in terms of how much it has. It has 70 odd games, I believe, at launch Damn. on day one, which is really impressive because some of these games are not mobile games. They look like fully fledged RPG type things. One of the ones, mm. I can't remember the name of it, looks very similar to like Zelda Breath of the Wild. Um, so you've got some proper 3D RPG type things on there. I think there's a Crash Bandicoot. No, not Crash Bandicoot. What was it? Uh, Sonic game. There's a Sonic game on there. Um, potentially cool. the racing one. So they have got a few big franchises, but for the most part, I haven't really heard of any of the games on there. So that's but kind of interesting. what is the major thing about this? They have exclusives! Yeah! And that who is doesn't have exclusives? Who doesn't have exclusives? Come on. Think, guys. What's the big, the big cheese at the minute? Yeah, well, uh, you guys are well informed. Um, who Stadia. doesn't? Oh, yeah, that's so coming out very this soon. Is an, yeah. yeah, this is an obvious sort of response to Stadia, essentially, isn't it? And Apple has made. Know, it's, yeah, go on, go on. Oh yeah, so so Stadia have been like, right, here's our streaming thing in it, and it's really good, and you know, with their super duper catchphrase, it works, which is uh exactly what you want to hear but just at works. the same time it, it just works yeah we'll see but the issue is is that everyone 
as far as I'm aware, was expecting Google Stadia to be a subscription service because it's yep. a proven model that works. You know, yep. I w- if I get Google Stadia, I want to play whatever game I want whenever I want. That's that's what makes it amazing. Could you imagine if um, Xbox Live Game Pass on PC, for example, was a streaming platform that worked, right? I would have played like all of those games by now. The only thing that's stopping me playing most of those games is the fact that I have to do like a 130 gig download to play Gears of War 4. Like it's it's insane. Yeah. It that that's the issue, and you know they've gone. It works great. Now what what's what's your USP? It works. No no what's your USP? What what what, do you, what are you what are you providing us with? It it works and the other ones don't. Great. Okay. So why would I get you and not a PlayStation 4? Because yeah. you can play me in the toilet. Um, <laughs> Which is what right, most people cool. are going to use it for, obviously. Yeah, yeah, but... <laughs> you know, like, what, what, what is your USP? That you can play it anywhere? Fine. That's kind of cool, I guess, for some people. But, you know, how often do you play games in places other than your living room? Yeah, my, my hype for often. Stadia dropped off as soon as they announced the way that their pricing model was going to work. Like before that, yeah. I was I was uh, cautiously curious because streaming platforms have never worked that well in my experience in the past. If anybody can do it with their infrastructure, it's Google. But yeah. as soon as they said you basically have to subscribe to the model plus buy the games plus there's no, there no is, rule. There is a free version. Oh yes, there is. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but so, but, which is quite nice. I think the, the, I guess the selling point for it is people that don't want to buy consoles and just want to play a game. You know, like if 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 I was if I didn't have any money and I couldn't afford to buy a console, but I could afford to buy a game, and I don't have to make that initial investment of three hundred quid to buy a console. Yeah. I can just be like, oh, it's just buy the game, and you can play it on any browser, which is quite nice. I that, guess. That is a good point. But it's not. You know, if they had a subscription model, man, oh man, it would be so good. I'd love it so much. Yeah. And well, Apple Arcade yeah, is I'd launching at just five pounds a month, I believe. Might be five dollars. Five a good. month. Might, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll give it a go this week because I think there's a three month trial. Yeah. I'll give it a go this month, this week even, and I'll, I'll let everyone know how. It yeah, is that'd be week. awesome. I'd be interested to hear about that. I'll try the streaming as well because I'm curious as to how well the streaming works because I've got a really good internet line here, so I'll be, I'll be interested to see how well it works on here i think you've got a relatively average internet line which makes it an even better test Bitch, for please. the general audience uh yeah but the wi-fi is now super good when you plugged it into that other one remember good well yeah uh, interested to hear about that um yeah do, do we know what the specs wise it is like do we know whether it goes to retina for example like uh, good does question. it run at full resolution know. on an ipad because that would be pretty insane if it did <laughs> yeah i i would be very surprised if it could run at sort of the close to four or five k that yeah. the screens can do um mm. so yeah i'm not sure about that it's a good question all right oh, well, i'll find out this week when i'll yes. count the pixels awesome um, yes count the pixels <laughs> <laughs> there are 14 don't million that, don't mention that name anywhere are <laughs> Sweet. all right cool um, that's it. No, not really. I think that's it. Cool. Right. So, moving on, we've got the what have we been playing section. Mm. So yeah. So every week we're just gonna talk about what we've been playing this week. Um, we're gonna sort of cover again. Like the, this is a particularly long podcast because we're covering like two weeks worth of stuff. Yeah. So again, it might be a bit long. Well, in mine and Dan's cases, it's definitely gonna be a bit longer this week because we both bought a Switch in the last couple. In fact, two weeks ago. So we've been playing oh, more than normal. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, whereas Kevin's been on holiday. And yeah, so like, do you want me to get my bit so... out of the way? Because uh... yeah, go on. Yeah, go on. You go first. Yeah. So I'd I'd you say go nap. at the <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> uh... Yeah, like I'd say my only, my only uh game. Well, I'd say the two games I've been playing probably Overwatch, because I still dank. thoroughly enjoy that game. Yeah, I think yeah. it's very uh very enjoyable. Um, <laughs> That's a great description. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. I, just I, think mean, it's, it's I mean, to be fair, there's not much else to say about it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's been like, out for long enough. I think a, people know. Yeah, it is. it's a good good team fight, team based game. Um, yeah, new character recently. Was there? Uh, relatively. Sigma. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sigma. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, he's got a lot of uh, good feedback. Um, mm. 
and then uh, and I guess the other one would be like the last of the FIFA before it's just it's uh well it's over now whole FIFA 19 because there's other games out so it's pointless. Is that how it works? Go so, FIFA, so yeah, one honestly, ends, like, so and then the they, other comes they, and takes over. Pretty much because everyone just everyone jumps off the game and it's not relevant, is it? Like it has no. <laughs> God, that's how they they really rope you in, don't they? They, they yeah. it's, it's, and, and not only that, it's like one one of the best things I found as well is obviously like, Ultimate Team is their biggest, you know, biggest things where they get all their money. It's the thing that everyone loves the most. Um, and one of the best things is starting again because the next FIFA you get a little bit extra part of it. Like for example, they've they've like the, the big selling point in Ultimate Team this year is you have um like target like really long distant targets to work towards so it makes you want to play more and more and more so you get these rewards and stuff from long distance like playing which is I, i'll be honest with you when i say that ea don't listen to their fans that is one thing that a lot of fans wanted they wanted a, a reason to play the game for that long a distance like yeah to like time, play yeah. and like play with the same cat person all the time and stuff because like there might be someone you really love and you know, you, you play and play and play, and like if you reach like a thousand goals with him, you get a reward and stuff, and it's it's rewarding to do that with like you know. But, I mean, me personally, I'm not going to be getting a new one because it's just I just. All right, guys, you heard it here first. It. All right, Kevin is not buying the next <laughs> FIFA, so hey, man. we're going to start. Hey. We're well, going to start the countdown up? now, okay? <laughs> guys, put put your votes in. How long you think it will be until he cracks? Because uh, I think I can't remember what year it was. I think he lasted about three weeks before he bought it. So, and he said the same thing. I so, doubt I've lasted. I, I'm from pretty sure I bought it even on the, on the first day it's come out nearly every single year. So. All right, put your votes in, guys. I'm gonna <laughs> say. I'm gonna say two weeks. Then. Um. Nine days. Nine days. All right. Cool. There's there's other games I'm de- I'll definitely but but uh, before that, for example, Borderlands would. 100% be before that. Are you get what, what platform but are you getting <laughs> on, Kevin? Uh, well, it all depends. If if you guys are up for it, probably on it on PC. But if none of you guys really seem that interested in it, then I'll probably get on Xbox and. Okay. Cool. Is it two or three player? At least three. Four player, isn't it? Yeah, four. Oh, four I, thought, I, thought I think two I think player. Okay, Destiny cool. was the only game that ever did a three player mode. I'm I'm down I'm down for um for playing that if you want to yeah I'd be definitely up for it yeah other than that I haven't really uh oh sorry I vaped oh god I'm sorry I had to go at <laughs> oh you my dad. god I'm sorry oh my god you hypocrite how dare you <laughs> addictions I'm sorry. I'm too oh, many I'm addictions <laughs> um yeah other than that I've I've been on I've been on two holidays in the past like month so uh. Yeah, I haven't really played many other games. And with Borderlands 3, if anyone is probably interested, we might possibly be streaming it. Hell I know yeah. It's, uh, yeah, like I said, we're not sure if we're going to be getting it yet, but it'll be, uh, yeah, if we if we do, look up, go back on go onto our Twitter, we'll definitely be... Uh, yeah, we'll put our Twitch deep yeah, in there and stuff. And, uh, yeah, we'll be streaming it, which would be pretty cool. Um, yeah. All right, yeah, yeah, up to you guys, man. I'll, I'll go take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> you better bloody not. I expect loads of questions about all these games. Okay. Oh. <laughs> um, all right, Dan, do you want to go first? I mean, do you want to um, go through the ones that you've played that I haven't played, and then I'll go through my ones that 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 I've played and you ooh. haven't played, and then we'll go through the same ones together. Okay. Um... <laughs> that made sense. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, cool. So I think the only one that I've played recently that you haven't played recently is Hollow Knight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what a game. Yay! I love it so much! <laughs> what a game. Yeah, I'm I, I'm not as big into indie platformers as you are, I don't mm. think. Or at least I didn't Probably, think I, I mean, was. I've played a hell of a lot, so... <laughs> I didn't think yeah. I was into them, and that's the interesting mm. part of this experience of playing Hollow Knight. It didn't take long before I realised what all the fuss was about. Mm. and there's a couple of weird things about it like when you when you're jumping and when you're moving i mean i'm playing it on the switch and i pretty much own, yeah i have only played it in handheld and it looks stunning and it plays beautifully on the switch 
Yeah. And there's like the jumping where you kind of have to hold the button down for longer than you expect to. Like in Mario, for example, you still have that, but it's a bit more responsive. But it takes like a few seconds and it makes sense and you realize why they've done that and it gives you so much more control over your character in the world. Mm. Um, the characters are really interesting and whimsical and quirky and the environments are drop dead gorgeous, I must say. For what, a what, what's up? Is, it, is, it a, is it a platformer? Is it a hack and slash? So I'll try my best puzzle. to explain it. It's a kind of a moody, um, side scrolling, hack and slash, Dark Souls ish type game. Uh, it's very much, yeah, Metroidvania. Like Castle Crash. No, um, no, no, no. 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 It's, it's a, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, it's an adventure game. There's a story to it. There are various characters. You play as an insect. Um, all the characters in the world My are favorite. some variation of insects, <laughs> but they have like faces and characteristics and costumes and things. Uh, it's a very imaginative world. Um, yeah, and I don't really get what the story is. Yeah, but it's yeah, it's 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 stunning. The the combat's yeah, sort of slash and block and dash, basic kind it's of. Basically about a like insect fantasy kingdom. Yeah, that sounds. That makes sense. Good. Like underground, yeah. where there's like, um, you know, like religion there and gods and spirits and all sorts but all you know confined into this little insect world and it's <laughs> it's, it's yeah it's, it's it's phenomenal it's a masterpiece yeah so you've completed it um i'm only oh, yeah, yeah. maybe i think i looked at my playtime earlier i think i'm about seven hours into it so i've got a pretty long way to go i imagine uh but yeah, yeah i think you got got quite a ways to go dan <laughs> yeah i'm really enjoying it though and yeah every time i pick it back up again it's one of those games where before you pick it up, you're like, oh, this is quite an investment. You kind of really yep. have to get into the mood. <laughs> but as soon as you pick it up and start moving around, you're, you're into it. And and I must say, as you said earlier on, the music is gorgeous. The yeah. sound in yeah. general, even the footsteps, like it's masterfully done. Yeah. And you know, that, that game started as a game jam project that was made in a couple of days. What? Really? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. madness. I think it was like two people or a small team or something they made it as a very simple project where you had to stay alive by eating the hearts or souls of these other weird insect creatures they made it in two days yeah, yeah. it's pretty cool um that's mad yeah so looking forward to getting into that other games that we've now the only other games that i've got here are games that we've both played recently okay uh, cool let me i'll go through the ones that i've played then yeah awesome um so i on the switch i had a little binge and bought loads of games um so the first one being Steam World Heist, Ooh. which is alright. <laughs> it's a, I think it's a port of a mobile game, and it kind of feels like it's a port of a mobile game, to be honest. Very simple. I think the the gimmick is that bullets bounce. That's the gimmick, mm. and it's oh, a okay. turn-based shooting game. So you basically aim at walls and stuff, and it bounces to get enemies. Very difficult as well, like surprisingly difficult. I was not expecting it to be as hard as it is. Um, but it's okay. It kind of feels like a really naff version of um, what's that? What's that game that we played on Game Pass? That uh, the one where you go on spaceships, the Void Bastards. Oh, um, is it a first-person yeah. game? No, no, no. It's not a side scroll. It just oh, feels okay. like that sort of thing where you go into r procedurally generated spaceships, but it's turn-based instead. Oh and you get loot and then go back to spaceship and go to the next spaceship it even has like a road map like not road map like a space map like it where you can choose which right. place to go to next so yeah similar sort of thing to that but it's okay i probably to be honest I'll, I'll probably not play much more of it I've, there's so many games out this but i've just bought a switch man like three years late and there's just so many games on there i haven't got the time to be wasting you know what on yeah. one, what, one so. game that i know you and uh you and your, you and your missus would actually love mm. Wii tennis we or, well, not tennis, or Mario tennis, whatever. Mario tennis, ten yeah, yeah, yeah. Like honestly, that game, so good, so is good it? on the Switch. It's honestly. Oh, it's Callum got it. Yeah, it's so much oh, fun, cool. man. I'll, I'll give it a whirl at some point. Yeah, it, it does look good. To be fair, I, I love the one on um um. God, what was it? Wii. I think it was Wii. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'll give that a whirl at some point. So, uh, to be fair, they've, they've put Mario in the title, and you know what that means? It's bloody expensive. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's um. What was that? 
Steam World Heist, yeah. Okay, so I've also played and completed Detention. Oh, you finished it? I How finished it, yeah. How so long it's, was like, it? it's quite short. Probably about four hours, maybe? Okay, that's a long detention. Um, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it's ba okay. It's it's very hard to describe without making it sound terrible. Um, it's essentially, um, oh god, how do I describe it? It's a side-scrolling. I wouldn't even. I can't. I can't even call it a walking simulator. It's more of a visual novel than anything. There's barely any mechanics in it. And yeah, it's it's very story based. It has like this weird sort of like kind of like a Paper Mario style, um, uh, sort of you know art. So all the characters look like they're made out of paper, kind of cardboard cutouts. Like yeah, kind of like that, yeah. Um, like you you know where you can see like each body part is like its own unit of paper, and then oh, they all right. sort of move to get, yeah. So um, yeah, um, it was very good <laughs> it shouldn't have been good i just found it quite interesting and the way it told the story was very interesting and it really reminded me of silent hill so it had a very very silent hill vibe where uh you know you start off in a school and then you pass out or fall asleep or something and then you wake up in the same school but it's very different so like where it has like the silent hill world and the normal world and then towards the end you start switching between the two um and it the story is very confusing and interesting at the same time and it's i think it, it's set in um god where's it set like indonesia or singapore or something and it's basically about the white terror or something that happened then and where they started going through this thing where they were burning books about you know, like uh, not burning books. Sorry, they they weren't allowed certain books that had history that didn't conform to their government sort of things. So like the standard sort of propaganda thing. Um, and yeah, and it's got a really interesting, quite a deep story actually, which is all told just throughout the game, as opposed to like cutscenes and things. Is everything you pick up relates to the story. Every single item, every single room, everything relates to the story. Every line of text, you know, there's nothing, there's no faff in there whatsoever. So that's cool. So it's not yeah, it was, point, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's basically like a four-hour, fairly slow film. So it's probably like a seven out of ten, seven point five out of ten. Definitely wouldn't recommend it to you or Dan. I don't think you would give it the the time of day. It's <laughs> maybe Dan. But Kevin, hell nah, because it's <laughs> it's it's, <laughs> it's lots of reading and and quite slow. Um, so yeah, I, I would recommend to anyone. I mean, it's dirt cheap. I think on Switch it's about three quid at the minute. Same on Steam. Oh, easy. Um, and yeah, cheap on PS4 That's as well. That's not bad it's, for I, a four-hour experience. No, it's not bad at all. No, um, and it's it's quite it's quite haunting and scary as well for a game that's like a side-scroll, rubbish, not rubbish graphics, but you know, like mediocre graphical style it's still quite creepy so yeah. it's yeah and it, it it's kind of intriguing how the story plays out because you have absolutely no idea what's going on at the start and then by the end you do so it's good um yeah good game i i recommend to people that like those sort of visual novel games um right okay i've also played so on i can't remember what date 14th or something uh blasphemous came out I don't yeah. know how I feel about Blasphemous. I wasn't sure. The My first instinct, seeing some screenshots, reminded me... Oh, Dan, me of... you will hate it. You're playing Hollow Knight right now. It's like it's like playing a shit version of Hollow Knight. Like... Well, stylistically, <laughs> it reminded me of uh, Dante's Inferno on the PS3, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it's as dark as Dante's Inferno. It's it's unsettu uh, unsettingly, is that a word? Unsettlingly. Unsettlingly. That does not sound like a word. It does not, does it? Uh, <laughs> no. I think it makes it's, sense. Yeah, it's like, you know, when it's just so dark, you're just a bit like, oh, God, this is so depressing to play. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like that. The combat is pretty naff, yeah. I'm honest. It basically feels like the superpower things that you get are kind of pointless. So, like, you know, like your special moves. You're like, ah, oh, this one shoots fire across the floor and covers the whole map. 
yeah, but you're completely exposed while you do any of these moves, so you're better off just using parries and mm. your standard Dark Souls-esque attacks, you know? Platforming is a bit mediocre. It's, it's, it feels very, very mediocre, if I'm honest. Um, it, it feels like if this game came out when, you know, like, the SNES was out, it would be great. Like, <laughs> yeah. like it's a really good version of a SNES 8-bit Castlevania-style game but in this day and age i i expect more from games than what it's delivered to be honest um see i would rather a game be really bad than be Mm. just mediocre i hate five out of tens so much yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i'd I'd rather have a really bad game that annoys me because then at least i'm more like passionate about speaking about it i don't really know what to say about blaster it's just a bit eh, you know yeah (laughs) Um, speaking about really bad games, great segue, Ben. Um, <laughs> on to Blair Witch. Oh man! Oh yeah, you picked that up on the Xbox Game Pass. It came out like day one on the Game Pass. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason it came out day one on the day part. How day much of it did Game you Pass actually game. end up playing? Was it more than? Do you want like twenty minutes? Time? Do you want time period or how far into the game? Because they're two very, very different figures. Okay, oh, well, give us both. So I played for about an hour, roughly. I didn't get past the first scene. <laughs> 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 okay. You know when you play PS2 games, yeah? yeah? Do you ever remember the pain and suffering of invisible walls? Yes, sadly. Yeah, yeah. So this is basically a PS2 game. Um you're wow. presented with this luscious awful frame rate forest right and you walk out you know very uh, uh, just in in context i love blair witch i love the first film i i even loved the second film which got really poorly received but i thought it was great um like i said love horror films so um but so it was nice it was quite a nice feeling you know i've got you get you drive along in the intro credits sort of thing and you, you get out your car and you're at the entrance to the forest and you walk through the gate where everyone walks through to get into the, the Blair Witch Forest place and if you notice in the first and second film they walk through the same gate and it's in the game and it's really like nostalgic and nice and you're like oh cool and you walk through the gate and then oh my god I don't know th- 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 whoever this Blair Witch figure is my god is her superpower just putting up invisible walls in front of you all the time because my god it's just awful you look at this forest and you just think cool all right well this is it's a forest you can walk anywhere surely no 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 you cannot walk anywhere no no you can only walk where they want you to walk right but it still has no signposting as to where to go see that's the thing isn't it like resident evil 7 i played it quite a while ago now but i remember the forest in that at the very start of the game that was kind of linear as well but the original wall the the invisible walls even in that were kind of done cleverly like kind they of were obvious but yeah blocked obvious. up with rubble and you had like piles of things and although you could tell there was an invisible wall there you knew where you were supposed to go and yeah but they're, they're not invisible walls are they I, I don't i have no issue with there being an obstacle in the way leading me down a certain direction the issue is well it looks like if you can it looks there, like you, you can go somewhere yeah. but you can't yeah that's that's the issue right i went over to a little cave uh, basically you're looking for this kid you're part of a search party looking for a kid and um, I look in this cave and there's a ball in there and there is a twig. There is this one twig going over this cave, right? Just just, just a twig. Just, th- th- that is it. Just this one tiny stick with like three leaves on it. I bet you can't go into said cave. No, no, no. That's not where you're supposed to go. Come on. Um, the frame rate's awful on PC, if I'm honest. It doesn't run very well at all. Um, but that could, I don't know. Xbox Game Pass has had a few issues with performance, to be honest, in terms of games on PC. So, yeah, whatever. But um, that's not, I, I don't really mind. I'm not that fussy about frame rate, to be honest. I mean, I've only got 60 FPS monitor anyway. But yeah, just just not good, man. I like, I, I like passionately love and adore pretty much all horror games. Like, even bad horror games, I love. You know, like, I, I still, even though I said earlier I don't want to talk about Resident Evil 6, I do actually like that game. And I know I shouldn't because it was hated by everyone. But it's still a horror game, and I love horror games. It's my guilty pleasure, you know. I just could not get on with this. And, yeah, I'm not a fan. I don't think I'm going to pick it up again. If 
if anyone wants to tell me I'm wrong, please do <laughs> tell me I'm wrong and I will try again. But you might need to tell me where to go because I've currently been wandering around this forest for an hour trying to figure <laughs> out where these invisible paths are taking me. But, um, yeah. If it's and... here, surely you just have to keep walking in the direction it asks you to oh, okay. go. I wish. Um, I mean, but then, but then a little part of me was like, but this, this is Blair Witch, isn't it? This is, this is what Blair Witch is like. Because remember in Blair Witch, um, the forest becomes like an endless thing. Have you, have you seen Blair Witch, any of you? No. Sad to say, I haven't. Oh my god. Well, you haven't seen the first Blair Witch? No. I've never really oh liked god. horror films. I love horror games. Yeah, I, I know. Horror yeah. Um, but yeah, so basically, they walk into this forest and it becomes like a never ending loop. Does that make sense? Yeah. So they keep going past the same place. They're walking in a straight line and they'll go past the same place over and over again, like that. So I was playing the game thinking, is this just really clever that they're, they're doing this? But then after playing it for an hour, there's only so if that was their idea and that's their mechanic and that something needs to happen in the space of an hour i can't just wander around this never-ending cycle for longer than an hour waiting for something to happen it's well, just bonkers remember P like, pt was essentially an infinite corridor that went round in circles yes and that was one of the most interesting infinite corridors <laughs> yeah because things happen yeah. every time you don't notice anything. You're in this forest and there's nothing. The only yeah. thing you notice is the fucking twigs in the way of it you It only has to be subtle. Doorways. It doesn't even have to be some big crazy set piece. Just, no, just yeah, little Yeah, bits, no, I like know? subtlety in horror games. Yeah, yeah, just something. Just give me anything. The only thing I saw was a bloody squirrel. That was it. <laughs> it's pretty cute. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly what I want in a horror game. A freaking cute squirrel. Uh, yeah, anyway, that's uh, that's Blair Witch. Um, yeah, like I said, anyone wants to tell me I'm wrong, please do. Because I, I want it to be good. Because it was one of my actually believe it or not one of my top games at e3 the one that i was most excited about oh yeah I remember you were hyped for that. <laughs> yeah so i've been severely disappointed so far but yeah um right that's all the games that i've played that you haven't played mr daniel cool let's save the big one for last yeah yeah uh sure yeah. um so let's go on to the obvious switch release games uh yeah mario odyssey i don't know how much of you have played of that not as much as i i would have hoped to have played but okay well it's to, it's what well, it's exactly what everyone says about it it's really really good fun it's nostalgic yep. <laughs> the music is great the movement is great the levels are interesting there's a lot to do um there's some moments Classic in the game Mario. particularly in the metro world that are brilliant uh yeah i mean there's not much to say without spoiling some of it but it's mario honest, at its we, finest. We, don't, we don't need to talk about it Ev everyone loves mario Everyone knows that Mario Odyssey is dope as hell. Like we don't. Yeah, <laughs> don't, it's genuinely it's, it's, really it's fun. It's as good as everyone says it's, it is. It's, that, that's all you need to. Know. It felt if you haven't when, got it. Get it. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I must say, it felt as nostalgic. It felt as good as that first feeling that I remember getting when I played Mario sixty four for the first time. Yeah. The yeah, first three yeah. D kind of experience of Mario, which was mind blowing. Um, it felt that good. So, yeah, amazing. Yeah. Zelda Breath of the Wild again not going to talk about it too much it's been out for a while now but having a blast on that i put it down for a couple of days at a time pick it back up where i left off and just fully immersed and i love it um can't yeah, wait so, to... so in terms of zelda i'm not enjoying it as much as most people say it is right oh so no no let me re rephrase that i wasn't enjoying it as much as everyone says it was amazing okay everyone was like 10 out of 10 game of the year phenomenal i was like it's pretty good i guess and then I went on a little adventure with a horse um, called Harold, and uh, <laughs> we. So I play. I play it with my wife, and we um, we trotted along, and I was like, right, I'm just gonna go through here and see what's in this next sort of area. I walk through the area, and there's a freaking centaur in there, right? This massive centaur, <laughs> and it, and it sort of spots me from like really far away, and I'm like, is that really far away? and really big or is it closer and really small i couldn't tell and then he just starts charging towards me and he fires this ice bow at me and freezes me and i die and it was just so cool man. <laughs> i it love how so you good. just get destroyed by a centaur and it was such yeah a great and moment. i i know there's stables in the game where you can keep your horses so yeah. i was trying to find a stable for harold and um i couldn't and i got to this point where i went down this really long path and there was it was a river at the end of it and there was a boat there and harold can't go on the boat <laughs> um, and so i had to have a really emotional goodbye with him oh, and then no. it turns out you can feed harold apples 
if you drop an apple on the floor, he eats. I didn't know that. You. Oh, I'm totally yeah. feeding my horses. <laughs> so yeah, just just a really, like you said, immersive. Uh, I love the freedom. Yeah. That, yeah, I'm surprised that there's something you cannot do, like putting a horse on a boat. Like that surprises me. That's how sort of. I mean, there might be a way to do it. It's just that the, the end of the path was submerged in water already. So does that make sense? Yeah, well, it was like yeah, shallow yeah. water. So I don't think there was a way to get. Like if it, if it was like land and then boat, then I reckon you might be able to do it. But because the the it was already submerged, the end of it in shallow water, it was too hot. The boat was already too high for the right. horse to get onto. I think, but yeah, it was very emotional. Uh, and we on to the next one then. Yeah. Dead cells. Dead Hell cells yeah. is so much Hell fun. Yeah. Um, I'd heard a bit about it. I think you ended up picking it up sort of without us ever mentioning it and then you said how good it was to me randomly one day so i decided to yeah, yeah. decided to add it to my list of games to get soon on the switch and then it released on the xbox game pass so i could give it a try for free and i had an absolute blast with it um it's a side scrolling action hack and slash it's really fast paced uh but it's got this really nice visual pixel sort of hand drawn style to it um and yeah the combat is just so gratifying the the animations are really slick and smooth you're darting around and dodging and parrying and fighting off uh waves of enemies i guess um essentially it's a roguelike there are interesting bosses i haven't finished the run yet but yeah it's, it's a lot of fun i mean to be fair i've played like quite a lot and probably like 30 40 hours of it and i literally just finished my first run you played yeah you played a lot more week, than me so. i had one really lucky run where i managed to get to the final boss but i haven't been able to get even close to that in subsequent runs yeah it's it's it is a very very nice game and the weapons are fun that's the main thing yes um is kevin, yeah. is kevin still there yeah, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> I'm just listening. Like, I thought you were actually like, having a nap. Just, no, no. You're, you're, <laughs> no I'm, I'm just listening because obviously I, I don't know literally nothing about him. So it's well, kind ask of a, questions about it then. Yeah, but you're, you're talking about it. That's why. You explain to me what it's about. Okay, and... but I swear to God, if you're on the phone or watching a YouTube video or doing anything other than full <laughs> undivided that was That was anything. totally a guilty laugh there. It was, wasn't it? You've, you've oh, caught oh, him oh, red-handed. You, you were on YouTube, weren't you? Me, I'm not on YouTube. No, trust me. I have the little uh, what's the, the what's it called, Audacity open. Well, you're just watching the wavelength go up and down. <laughs> well, what else am I going to have open? What else am I going to have in front of me? <laughs> so, to be yeah. fair, I'm playing with a laser right now. So. No, well, there um, you go. Anyway, sorry, digress, Kevin. Attention, thank you. Dead Cells is uh, awesome, well, Kevin. You you'd probably quite like that actually. Yeah, uh, you, oh, Kevin, you're a big fan of Binding of Isaac, right? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you would good, yeah. adore Dead Cells. Then it's oh, like awesome. it's yeah. like Binding of Isaac on steroids. <laughs> like, it's so good. It's the it's the, the most seamless, smooth, enjoyable gameplay. But with that procedurally generated, um, you know, doing a run and then doing another run. And yeah, like just that. continuously but trying to improve. Yeah, and... no, it's like really good. And is it, it, is, um, it you... is it is it like a different? Is it is it similar in terms of like every single time you go into it, it's slightly different? Yes yeah so it's the, it's the same level right so basically each level has like a theme so like it'll be like uh, the first uh, a one swamp of them like or a, a castle a, a swamp or, or sewers or castle or whatever yeah so you'll go through the same ones like that but each one of those so it'll be that theme but it'll be procedurally generated oh okay so right. yeah, yeah um but but it's on xbox game pass now yeah oh. try it it's really good yeah they're, they're definitely try it it's really good play <laughs> with a controller though. i think it, it actually says that on the main new screen but yeah play with a controller i mean i'd say just play it on xbox there's no reason to play it on pc oh yeah if it's on xbox game pass totally get it yeah yeah, yeah. i'm sure it is yeah um cool yes is that everything we've both played uh bunning of isaac but i've only played that for like 20 minutes or so so i'm not really going to talk about it but oh and um enjoying that cuphead. so far and yeah cuphead's on next on my list which we played we have only played co-op and we have only played together um in one or two sittings and yeah <laughs> it's really uh this is so over said and burned in but it's so hard it's one of the I most can't... difficult 
if not the most difficult game. No, it is. It's I've the most played. difficult game I've ever played by far. Yeah, yeah. nothing has ever come close to that. But <laughs> it still feels fair in a way. Like it's hard yeah, to describe. Yeah, you know it's your fault when you die. Well, but not, that's, that's not exactly thing. because there there is some randomness to some of the bosses and some of the encounters. The platforming levels are almost the same exactly every time, so you could literally work out when to press the button by millisecond. Is it is is it like is it difficult but good difficult because it's a clever game? It is a clever game. It's designed to be very self aware of it being a very gamey game, if that makes any sense at all. Like <laughs> no. No. Um yeah, that, that, that makes no sense, does it? It's no. It's yeah, it's well designed, I think. It's a very well designed game. Very yeah, yeah, good looking too. Uh but yeah, the But what I mean is are... in it, it's your fault when you die. I mean everything that happens there is always a way to get out of it. Yeah, so you never really feel sense? completely demoralized, do you? So okay. you, a boss, like you... a boss can kill you a hundred times. You'll be like, no, we can, we can get our technique a bit better mm. next time, or we can get a bit closer. And then you'll have fifty runs of the same boss where it completely smashes you in the first phase, and then you'll get back to where you were again, and you'll get that little bit closer. And when you do, is, finally... it, is it meant to be a co-op game? It works really well as co-op. Um, I think uh, no, like really well as yeah. co-op. Like the the mechanics in co-op are so clever, it's so good. Because there's the um basically when you're playing co-op instead of single player, you there's uh is it called parrying in that? Yes. Yeah. So you basically if you if you jump and then you press jump again on something that's pink, um, which is quite a core mechanic. It uh, if you if you, yeah you parry it so you don't take damage from it or anything. And you get extra charge towards your ult or whatever. Um, but if you parry, basically when you die, your little ghost starts flying towards the top of the screen. And if the other player parries your ghost, you come back <laughs> alive again with one thing. That's cool. Yeah, it's it's, it's a really well designed game. Like and yeah, I mean, uh, do we really need to talk about how amazing the artwork is? I don't. I think know. everybody has seen a screenshot or two. Yeah, it's it's as good yeah. as it looks in all the the footage and the screenshots. It's really good looking really awesome yeah. hand-drawn stuff yeah uh, frame people. by frame as well like it's yeah it's madness yeah. yeah very very good but if you don't like hard games do not buy it no you will tear <laughs> your hair out yeah. you will hate it with a fiery passion um then again, uh, we haven't tried easy mode i don't know what that's like to be fair so didn't know there was one don't know. to be honest yeah remember when you click on the boss it's regular or easy isn't it oh yeah yeah i forgot about that but not that we're going to do that, but yeah. We would never sink um, that low. You've always got to go regular in your first run through, man, of anything. Yeah. yeah, a couple of times I think we almost decided to switch it, maybe. We were like, this is too hard, but then quickly jump back to regular, so it's all good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's go on to the last one, the big one then. Yeah. Mm, so one I've been looking forward to, if the, it's the one I think it is. It's the beta. Oblivion. Oblivion, for... <laughs> 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 PS3. Um, Modern Warfare beta. Ben, what do you yeah. think? Start. We've only played Bearing in Mind. We've only played maybe two hours of it. Yeah, roughly. Yeah. If that, I, I've, um, I've, I've, I've heard pretty exciting things about it. It's it's very good. <laughs> yeah, but there's a hesitation there, isn't there? Yeah, only because of that one game we played. If that game didn't happen, then I would have said it's excellent, right? But that one game makes me worried. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Totally. So. There's a thing with Call of Duty which a lot of people love and a lot of people hate, which is the running and gunning, the crazy submachine guns, you know, the old Winchester akimbo, you know, um, running around with all the quick perks on the knives and yeah. stuff like that. Everyone, a lot of people don't like that. And when I first, when we first played it, I was like, this feels nice, like really nice. It's really slow. The guns are really punchy, but have loads of recoil. No gun felt overpowered. Every mm. gun has its, its That's place. That's what it looked like. Yeah, so I every gun has its place, which is one thing which I think is really important, which I'll come back to in a minute. Um, but then we played one game where there was people running around super fast with, with their SMGs, and it, it, it was not as fun. But. I feel like I feel like it's it's one of them things that at the start of a new game coming out, especially a beta and stuff, people are gonna people are gonna do things that are a bit obscure until until it's figured out what yeah. the thing is. The meta yeah, will that's develop. exactly where yeah. we're yeah. over time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and and like 
if if the meta like I can't imagine by the but the way the game feels and the way it looks, like until you start understanding the the um the maps and you start understanding what guns you feel, what perks and stuff are good, that type of thing will probably run riot for a little bit. Yeah. Other things might run riot, like I don't know, like bazookas or something going mental. Or who knows mm. what it is, but like you know, at the start of yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, it's uh. So I think right, when I when I first saw that happening, and I saw people literally like sliding and jumping around corners, and you know, hip firing with an SMG. Yes, it was frustrating, but my first instinct was that it works if you don't get caught doing it. That it's something that can be easily punished if the other team knows kind of how to counter it by holding the right angles or positioning yeah. Yeah. teammates in the right yeah, places. Yeah, that's sort of what we concluded from it, didn't we? Yeah. The game. And the, I played one game today, kind of just before we started recording, and it already, just after one day, it already feels a bit more developed than it did yesterday in terms of the way that oh, people really? are playing. There might just be a coincidence because it was only one game, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And we only experienced that really in one of our maybe five or six sort of team deathmatch type games yesterday um mm. so how yeah. much of the beta can you actually play is it the, is it the full game essentially no no, no. it's um it's up to level 20 uh, a handful of guns and two maps i think yeah three think... game modes so it's, it's not, not it's a pretty is it, is it, uh, uh, i've seen the game mode um is it where is it 2v2 and you get like one yeah, life that's, each? That's, that's really oh, we'll, good we'll, we'll come on we'll come on to that in a minute yeah. Yeah, okay cuz like that's like good. that that's that, that's that's my kind of jam i remember when, when they yeah, did that man. on um <laughs> I think they did that on a... Actually, no, you know what? It was on League of Legends they did that because it was like a yeah, one-off thing. Yeah. And it was such good fun. Like, I sometimes you don't too, just yeah. want to play with other random people. Like, if you mm. if you can just play with your mate and just, you know, grind it out almost and just, like, you know, get get, get your tactics, just you two together, it's, you know... Yeah. That's what you want. Yeah, I fully agree. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, you like, like, like that, duos but, yeah. in... In battle royale games were always kind of my favorite way to play um i think it would be nice if they introduced like a 2v2 3v3 4v4 type thing i don't know how well that would work for matchmaking but i think it's a cool idea um we didn't actually play the what do they call it uh night vision mode we didn't play that and we didn't play the other one what's it called the ghost something like uh, i can't remember what it's called but it's like a 5v5 <laughs> sudden death thing where you only have one life but you can sometimes oh, get respawned. Shit, I didn't even know I was on there. Yeah, okay, neither cool. did I. I didn't actually see it. Or didn't know what it was until today. Um, so mm. we should try that at some point as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll we'll we definitely play about. more this weekend. So. Yeah, we were talking about the need for a competitive mode in a game like this to slow things down mm. a bit and get people a bit more focused in. So, yeah, could be potential there. Wait, so it's... it's oh, wait, isn't that one like... It's basically like Search and Destroy. Search and Destroy, that's the life. word I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah, they've got a mode like that in the beta as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You, you can revive people now, can't you? Yeah, I don't know exactly oh, how it works, you? but yeah. Yeah, I, I, I saw a little clip of uh, some people playing it, and yeah, I, I, I saw that, and I was a bit like, Call of Duty putting a revive system in. You know what? I am all for for revive systems. I think I yeah. mean it's good that as long as it's put in properly, mainly because I think the way Apex put it in is brilliant. I like yeah. you know, yeah. like you, you have to rework really for it, and it's, and it's very obvious when someone comes back. But what I've seen in that game, it seems very, uh, I don't know, like you just lay in a body and just press a button on them and they come back to life and it's a bit like... Yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to see. It's, Conceptually, um... it sounds really good. I like the idea of like somebody in a 1v5 being able to loop around the map, revive a couple of teammates and then come back from a 1v5 Yeah, I mean, it opens or... up lots of... But then like, if you shoot someone in the head, man, in, in a game like Call of Duty, you're going <laughs> to you're gonna want to think like, you know... There's not really much coming back from a bullet to the brain, is there? Like, like I'd <laughs> yeah, understand. If you, I mean, yeah. Call of Duty if realism you, went out the window. Years okay, ago, yeah, I understand that. But like, <laughs> if you if you if you got shot in like the stomach or something or like like the leg like five times and you end up dying from that, you know, you know, give give someone a crutch or something and they keep going. Like, you know. <laughs> yeah, you you can get revived, but you have to have one. You can only shoot with one hand. You have to use a crutch. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, so gunfight was was dope loved it uh it was quick i, I kind of wish there wasn't a kill cam in it if i'm honest i think i'd rather it was even quicker than it already is and you didn't have to wait for the kill cam to go off i'm not sure rounds, i but... agree with that but yeah, yeah i mean, I I mean that's just me being i do see what you're saying lazy. um 
yeah, but it is so far very nice. I am looking forward to playing, like, it's like yeah, like Dad said, we've only played two hours. I'm looking forward to playing some more properly tomorrow and Sunday and having a proper good old time, I'm sure. And yeah. I think that's all I have to say about it. Anything the only thing I want to then? say, which we touched on already, is I thought the 2v2 was going to be my least favourite, and mm. the big, huge things, the 20v20s and that sort of thing that they've been talking about, I think they're talking about 50v50 at one point, Ooh, I thought that cool. was going to be more up my street, but I must say, the 2v2 gun game, where they give you a random loadout each round, that is unbelievably good fun. Like really, yeah. really fun. Yeah, yeah really that's really what we said as well, isn't it? They, they don't, mm. you don't get to choose your classes. They give you the guns. And yeah, everyone gets yeah. exactly the same. And yeah, you get all no, sorts that's, of that's interesting varieties. Uh, the maps mm. are simple but interesting enough. We we were like making call outs within the first like thirty seconds, just you know, yeah. just making Left stuff tunnel, up on right the fly. Tunnel. Middle tunnel. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> all the tunnels. It just, yeah. it works. It works really well. Just yeah. so you guys know, there's only, the maps just three tunnels. That's it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, the other thing I said I'd touch on, I'm going to touch on now, uh, I thought it was weird saying that, um, is the gun types. So they all feel very different now, which is quite nice. Because I f it felt like Call of Duty sort of went down the path of every gun is good, and that's it. Every gun just felt like a laser, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Now they are distinctly different, like very different. You know, like an SMG, the damage drop off is insane. Like I hit someone with an AK-74, you know, eight or nine times from far away, and it doesn't kill them, which is, I like. is is a good thing because if my if I've got an SMG, which is like the best weapon up close, and I can still pick people off really easily from far away, why would you use anything else? Yeah. You know, and it's you know the the AK has really rubbish hip fire. You. LMG takes ages to start shooting, but once it does, it's a laser. Um, you know, so LMGs, are, they all have their purpose. LMGs are good for holding angles. SMGs are good for running and gunning, which is what they should be. Um, and yeah, so it's quite nice. It's good. Very good so yeah, far. I like the way. fact that I was worried about crossing the road in that game. <laughs> you know, because I, yeah, like, I had a yeah, gun. Never like, cross a road in a game, man. It's always <laughs> a scary one, that is. There was no way that I could like win this gunfight down this long road. Um, with the gun that I happened to have at the time, but I knew that there yeah. were people on the other team that had like longer range guns, so I was like, yeah, there's no way I'm walking across that open space. I'm going this way, mm. and it's just, yeah, it's nice. Yeah. All right. Anyway, that's enough. About a full that. review coming so, soon. Uh, oh god, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so now what's next? Yes. Yeah, so basically, what we're doing, right? Every. Oh god, I'm going to explain this. Um, okay. Yeah, I know. It, I, 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 it's, it's almost like one of the ones you have to write down to see. Yeah, um, right. So, okay, so uh, starting today, we are, I, the, Kevin and Dan are going to choose a game. So they've been discussing it in the week, and they're going to choose a game for me to play that they think I should play over the next three weeks. And in three weeks' time, I will give my verdict on what I thought about the game. Mm -hmm. um, and then next week will be Dan's turn. Oh, okay. And then the week I after didn't realise that was decided. Be, but... I just decided. Oh. Um, and then the week <laughs> after will be Kevin's turn. And then and then back to me again. So every three weeks, um, we have to play a new game. But for you guys, it means every week you will hear our verdict on a game that that will either be given to us for positive reasons, <laughs> they love the game and want us to experience it, or will be given to them to make them suffer. <coughs> Kevin Cuphead. Um, right. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, so that okay. so, uh, if it, if you're listening to this, then you'll hear the first verdict in three weeks' time. Just to yeah, clear that, which will yeah. be wh whatever game that they give me right now. So, so over to you guys. We, I'm. We had a little list. We had, we had a I know, I know where the game is. It's, don't, it's, don't list out it's your just, list though. No. Oh yeah, probably, that's true. We might want to come back to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Definitely back and forth between one. One I picked for certain. We agreed that we was going to give it to you, and then changed our mind and back and forth. And you probably know that this one's coming, but I think it's about time. I have absolutely no idea. That but okay. You <laughs> played it. Um, best part about it is it's free on Xbox uh, Game Pass. Uh, your game say. to play in the next three weeks. It's about six hours in total. I'm so think, nervous. Is Hellblade. Sinuous Hell Sacrifice. Okay. 
Uh, okay. Please play with decent headphones if you can. Yeah, uh, that's got, extremely got important. Courses. Okay, cool. So, all right, I'm interested. Yeah, I have. Okay, just for um, clarification, I have played about 15 minutes of Hellblade because. Okay. Dan, you were very excited about it when you had the PS4 Pro, and you wanted me to 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 experience the first 15 minutes. I think is that right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, so uh, I have played the first 15 minutes, but I haven't played any more than that. It's um, it's Ninja Fury, right? Yes. So it's a very okay, different yeah. game for I'm, them. I'm interested. They call it an independent AAA game, um, made by a relatively small team. What the hell did that mean? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a small team, very small budget. Some of the cost savings that they made are really quite impressive to read about. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I really hope you enjoy it because I thought it was one of the most interesting games of 2017. Sweet. Oh. Sorry, I just went to go and download it, and I just seen that Bloodstained: Ritual of the Night is on it on Game Pass. I nearly spent thirty quid on that for Switch earlier. Ooh. Jeez. Um. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I don't. I digress. It's okay. Um, there was a slight cut yes. out there, but it's okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um. Excellent. Cool. I am. I am kind kind of looking forward to that. I am looking forward to it, but at the same time, I'm worried I won't enjoy it, and uh, I'll well, upset you guys. No, it's fine. If you don't enjoy damage. it, then I'd, I'd like to discuss with you why. So Kevin hasn't played yeah. it, so you need to describe to Kevin what this game is yeah. in three yeah, weeks' time. Okay, cool. I know, um, know everything. All the ins and, ins and outs of it all. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, how do you feel um, about me having this game, Kev? Me? Hmm. Uh, well, I mean, I've never heard of the game before. <laughs> um, from what I've seen and how Dan describes it, I can imagine it being quite up your street. And you enjoying it so all right cool um yeah. but is that okay. uh, i thought that's about it, isn't it? after a, a nice lengthy lengthy podcast um yeah yeah so yeah that's that's it so sorry that this one has been insanely long they won't be this long normally i'm kind of losing my voice right now i don't think <laughs> i've spoken this much in one period of time for a very long time um I hope everyone enjoyed the first episode of Praise the Pickle. Yes. yes. And, uh, and thank you. you to give the, uh, everyone. The, sorry, thank you for listening. Yeah. Yeah. Those uh, of you that actually stuck through till the end, I wouldn't be surprised. If <laughs> anybody ever hears this, this, this I will be so happy <laughs> yeah. if one yeah. person listens to this segment right now. If you made it this far, right, we love you, you get a $10 gift card. What? Don't, don't say that. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, I retract. What if we get 4 million like, viewers in the first week? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah so if anyone has any questions or feedback or wants to tell me that I'm completely wrong about Blair Witch or completely right about anything else or Kevin's wrong about everything um, okay. our social media Twitter is at praise the pickle and our feedback email is praise the pickle podcast at gmail.com thank you can ever I, so can much I, everyone I just want to add one last thing if that's okay um, yep. Go. just a little teaser for next week uh, we did a top five this week, which we went on about for a bit longer than we expected. Um, but yeah, for the well, first... it's always going to be a bit longer, that one. Yeah, but... true. <laughs> uh, for the first two or three weeks, we're going to do another best five, just to kind of give you guys a bit more insight into our gaming past and whatnot. Um, so I've been asked to select the top five question for next week. So next week, you two need to tell us what your top five memorable gaming moments of all time were. Oh, okay, geez. cool. I like that one. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. That's going to be a lot harder than top five games, that's for sure. Yeah, and it, it's, um, it's totally okay so if some of those moments happened in some of your favourite games that you've listed this week. Um, I mean, they probably will be, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> There's a reason they're my favourite games. And if any listeners want to submit their top five, that would be nice <laughs> yeah. as well. Yeah, please do. I, I'd, I'd like to hear some other, other ones. Because totally. obviously, I, I know these totally. two quite well, so they, I already know theirs, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, next week we're going to be giving Dan his game for the next three weeks. I'm um, excited. Guitar Hero World Tour is on the cards, so he's going to have to buy all the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do the drum in it as well, the rock band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You, have to, you have to complete the game with every instrument to fully experience it, you know? He's like, a one man band. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all at the same time. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, get your Xbox 360 out. Um, cool. Thank you very much for this. Yes, thank you, everyone. everybody. See you next week. Yeah. Yep. Bye. See you later, compadres.